Welcome. Today is Thursday, January 12th, 2017 of the Arlington School Committee. Um, I'm going to open my meeting and talk about some of the art that we have in the room. Um, so over here, I believe these are all bracket. Um, we have kindergarten, fabulous feasts. Uh, many artists use food as subject matter for their work, and food is often present at celebrations of all kinds. Uh, kindergarten students spent the last few months focusing on many aspects of celebration, masks, costumes, party drawings, and now feast collages. Students were instructed to create a feast by cutting out appropriate shapes and colors to represent the various foods, imagining the colored paper background as their tabletop. Um, and then there are small details added with paint. Uh, over here is the goat Taku, fish printing, old and new, grade two. Students in the second grade took their previous print mini experience from earlier grades to new levels with the introduction of this lesson. Fish. Fish. Go to print, print. Wait. That. Oh, up the back. Fish. You know, the back. Okay. Okay, thanks. Um, Goi. Goitaku, and I know I'm butchering this pronunciation, printing was traditionally practiced in Japan several centuries ago as a way for Japanese fishermen to record particularly memorable catches before it influenced artists and developed into an art form. Students were told that they'd be combining traditional and new techniques of the printing in an artwork of their own. Uh, thin paper is placed on the rubber fish and gently rubbed to create a print, then students were ready to try the technique on their own. Once completed, the second step was to create a background on which to mount their fish print. Students were given a variety of materials, including watercolor and collage, and encouraged to combine the materials and utilize previously learned techniques, such as watercolor, resist, and wet and wet painting to create interesting and vibrant effects to highlight their fish print. So, okay, that's cool. Um, grade one, using line constructively, tree line drawings. And that is here, right, excellent. Um, for their first lesson of the year, first graders revisited the element of line and discussed how lines can be found everywhere in our world and that artists can use different kinds of lines to express their ideas more fully. Uh, students examined and discussed several examples of drawings by various artists, explaining how each artist used line. Uh, next, students were shown several paintings. Um, they were led to notice how particular types of line changes the way we expect a tree to look. Finally, students were instructed to create a line drawing of their own choice. That said, everything in the picture had to be constructed from a variety of appropriate lines, and the subject had to include at least one tree. So everything is done using lines, um, whatever, and uh, yeah, so that's cool. Um, and they're encouraged to think about how lines can be used to represent the many parts of a tree and different species of tree. Uh, grade four, and I think that's this one, unity and transformation in sculpture. Fourth, in which we have pictures of the sculptures. Fourth graders were introduced to the design element of unity, in which an artist employs something which visually holds the artwork together. Students also discussed how an artist can utilize the idea, process, and transformation in a work of art. Students were then shown several examples of artwork by Tara Donovan, an artist who uses common disposable materials such as paper plates and styrofoam cups, and transforms their appearance by arranging large amounts of the same material in unexpected ways. Um, sculptures of this nature often tend to be abstract and organic in style and content. Students were encouraged to explore this idea while also creating a stable, secure structure with balance and support. That looks pretty cool. Uh, architectural facades is something that's partially hidden. Uh, is that back there? On the right hand side. On the right hand side. Right of the fish. Oh, they're both <coughs> in the same place. Okay, got it. The right of the fish. Students in grade three have been learning about architecture and how architects plan buildings. For this lesson, students learn that the front exterior wall of a building is called a facade and respond to specific elements to be considered. Students notice that architects, like all artists, often bor borrow design ideas from existing buildings and adopt them to their own ideas. Uh, students were instructed to create a styrofoam block print of a building facade of their own design while paying special attention to details and various structural elements such as arches, columns, balconies, and towers. Once the prints were dry and complete, students created a background setting for their building using a variety of media. media. And that one then is grade five, designing better products. Students in grade five were introduced to industrial design and discussed several examples of the kinds of factory-made consumer products industrial designers help conceptualize and construct. Students were led through the multi-step process in which an idea must be carried before a product can be sold in stores to potential customers. They were assigned into design teams consisting of groups of four to five students. 
Each team was given a design assignment in which to either improve an existing product or invent a new product for potential purchase. Um, after preliminary ideas were drawn out, conceptual sketches when drawn on graph paper and students were required to show a minimum of two views of their product, including front view. Labeling product features, characteristics, and special selling points were also required. Okay, it's always great to see what the students are up to. Um, makes me want to go back to school to grade school. <laughs> um, so next thing on the list is community participation. Do we have? No one's on the list? Okay. Okay, uh, so uh, next on the list is uh, community education summer fun uh, approval, trip approval. And I think Mr. Zurich can come speak to us. And our director of community education, and Jen Rothenberg. And Jen Rothenberg, yes. Good evening. Thank you for having us here tonight. I'm Jen Rothenberg, the director of Arlington Community Education. This is Tom Zurich the seventh grade English teacher at Audison Middle School. As most of you know, Arlington Community Ed offers seven weeks of programming during the summer. We offer half day, full day, and field trips, as well as our ever popular insider's guide to Audison. About five or six years ago, Tom started our Adventure Day Trippers program, where he led middle, middle schoolers on trips um, to different places for a week. Uh, each day, there was a lot of different Trip for one full week. Uh, they would surf, they would do sea kayaking, they'd explore the dunes up on the North Shore, and they'd hike Mount Monadnock. The kids loved these experiences and gained so much from them. We're here tonight seeking approval for a new program. Tom has stepped it up a notch, and he's approached us with the idea to run an 11-day camping trip in Maine. The trip includes both a separate canoe and kayak excursions, as well as hiking in Acadia. Tom has a great deal of experience leading these kinds of trips, and we're very excited to have the opportunity to offer one like this to students in Arlington. As you'll see in your packets, we've done a great deal of research, and we have a lot of information for parents. We feel the trip is well planned and are confident that it's going to run smoothly. So now I'll turn it over to Tom, and he can walk you through the, the 11 days. and we'll happy to answer any questions. So I started thinking about this last summer. Uh, I did not do the adventure or the, the day trippers program. I was a little tired after doing five or six years of them. Um, but in the middle of July when I would have been doing it, I was kind of bored. <laughs> so I started thinking about what I could replace it with and I had thought about doing a trip like this a number of years ago. Uh, so I started thinking about it over the summer, made some initial inquiries, went onto websites, found out some of the better uh, canoe guides, uh, kayaking guides in Maine, and then went to Jen, I think early September, mm -hmm. <clears throat> with the idea of doing this trip. And did the, the, the number of days really around uh, a three-day, two-night sea kayak trip, three-day, two-night wilderness canoe trip, and then a three-night camping excursion in Acadia in between the two. And that's, it fell out to 11 days. Uh, traveling by van, pulling a trailer with all our gear in it, and then again, using licensed, experienced guides. This is not something that I would take on uh, myself. Just logistically, it's very difficult to do on your own. Uh, even though I'm comfortable with leading kids in kayaks and canoes, uh, I wouldn't try a trip like this on myself. So that's how it got to this point. <coughs> Jen was mildly enthusiastic and mildly skeptical. <laughs> 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 Should have gone that way. But. <laughs> <laughs> Questions and comments, Mr. Hainer. How many students will this be invo involving? Ten. 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 Ten students and a co-leader who is currently a freshman in college, who's a graduate of Arlington High School, Kate mm -hmm. Brennan. Thank you. Other questions, comments? Yes, Mr. Carden. Uh, I just would want to make sure we cleared this with the town council before proceeding with it. Yes, I have been in touch with town council. They've provided me with liability waivers. Um, I will have them uh, review all of the other waivers that we have because there are the separate waivers Sorry. for the two different uh, excursions. So we will have them review those as well. 
And I, I initially set the number at 10 because it's a manageable, manageable size group. Mm -hmm. uh, I have done two camping trips to Vermont, overnight camping trips as part of the uh, summer fund program. And both of those I did take 12. Mm -hmm. So 10, 10 seemed like a good place to start. It's possible we could take up to 12, but that would be the absolute maximum. Mm -hmm. Dr. Alzampi. Um, I'm wondering what the student adult ratio will be with the guides in, in, on the canoe. I believe there's canoe. two guides per trip for the kayak and the canoe. So it would be four adults along with the 10 or 12 students. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's it. That was my question. Okay. Yes, Mr. Slipman. So we're hard on the Canadian border. Uh, the St. Croix River is the border there. Yes. Do we have any uh, issues of passports or crossing the border? I don't think we actually crossed the border. Okay. Because yeah. I saw that the international coordinator signed the, uh, the uh, application. <coughs> the international trip coordinator signed Mary the Villano. Okay. Yeah, Mary yeah. Villano, yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah. be careful not to stray into Canadian <laughs> waters as we're. I wouldn't want to see any of your students stuck on the wrong no, side uh, of the border that can't get back. I did, um, at Kathy's request, I did go uh, <coughs> sit with Mary Villano to review the trip and to make sure that <coughs> we had dotted all our I's and crossed our T's and that we had all the proper paperwork. She has supplied us with um, a, a lot of great samples for uh, lists that we can give to parents, behavior guidelines, um, <coughs> medical information sheets. So. That's where some of this information came from. Okay. Cool. Uh, Mr. Hainer. On the, on the, the trips and stuff, the, do you have provisioning food and stuff like that at different times? The canoe trip is, is fully provisioned. They, that's, that's the nice Five. thing about paying, okay. paying guides to do that is they, okay. all the food, uh, dry bags, the boats, the so guides, that's all covered with that. The, the, the other, we'll, we'll camp. Uh, about five nights on our own, and we'll, we'll provision ourselves with that. But those are split up into one night, one night before the canoe trip. We'll drive up to Maine. It's about a seven hour drive. So we'll drive that, we'll spend the night in a campground close to the canoe put in. Uh, we'll be in Acadia for three nights, and then we'll drive down to Bristol and camp there so we're close to the kayak put in. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the kayak trip, we'll do another single night camp. And so that will, that will feed ourselves. The camping isn't out in the, in the, the bush itself. It's a this is good car camping. Kind of, <laughs> yeah. Yes, Dr. Alzambi. One more. Um, are you expecting the kids to be experienced, or are these trips within beginner range? No, the, the canoe and the kayak trip both start with ex instruction on kayaking and canoeing. So it's not, it doesn't really require... Uh, any past experience with that. It, re it requires a, a sense of adventure, a willingness to be uncomfortable at times, to get wet and cold and hungry. Um, but as, as far as the, the experience that they need, no, they don't. So I, I did a two-week backcountry um, canoe trip around this age, and it was, um, it, it was just a fantastic experience. I mean, it was yeah. incredibly difficult, but it was really um, mm -hmm. altering. Um, but I do have, I just have one question. Um, are students expected to uh, provide any more gear than the, you know, shoes and basic clothing? Is there, is there anything else that they would need to purchase? Uh, uh, sleeping bags? No, they'll need, they'll need sleeping bags. They'll need a good day pack. We won't be actually backpacking. We'll just be day hiking. Okay. So they don't need a real backpack. So, right, just basic. And for both of those trips, the, the, we, they use dry bags. Mm -hmm. And the best way to pack dry bags is to put your gear into soft, really garbage bags, mm -hmm. because then you can stuff the dry bags full. Trying to get a backpack into a dry bag is, doesn't work well. Right. Okay, great, thanks. Sleep, a sleeping bag would probably be the biggest sleeping bag and thing if they don't have thing. a good sleeping bag. Okay, great, thanks. And I really, I appreciate that you have an option for somebody with limited means to potentially get a, a break. And so that, I think that that's, um, to be encouraged, that, that's, that's nice to see. Yeah. Good. And we would hope that if there were a problem finding gear, I know the, the high school program does own some mm -hmm. of their own sleeping bags, so that might be a way that we can help as well if students aren't able to mm -hmm. get bags for themselves. Great. 
Thanks. Mm -hmm. Just uh, yeah, one quick thing. It, it, it brings back my Boy Scout experience and stuff like that. Some of these kids might be able to, Boys and Girl Scouts might be able to get some uh, credit uh, on merit badges. And I'm sure they could if they're in, yeah. yeah. I hadn't thought of that. Thank you very much. Uh, so we need to vote, actually, mm -hmm. don't we? Yes. Um, do I have a motion on the floor? Well, so move to uh, move <laughs> to approve the the uh, summer fun trip. Summer fun trip. Okay. Motion by Mr. Hainer, seconded by Second. Dr. Alzanampi. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> no, any opposition? It's unanimous. Great. Thank Could. you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. We'll yes. send you pictures. May I ask you to come back and maybe. It's a little slideshow. Oh, some pictures. That'd be great. Sure. Yeah, we'll definitely take some pictures. Yeah, yeah that'd be awesome. That'd be great. Yeah. Thank Bill, you want to go on the Thank trip, you. don't you? Thank you. Appreciate it. Here we go, Kathy. We should have an adult trip. We'll only pass it next time if one of us can go. Yeah. We'll do an adult one next year. Excellent. Thank you. like a shot. All right, so we're going to... Uh, Catherine Ritz, who is our Director of World Languages, is here this evening to do a presentation uh, just as an overview of the department, the offerings, um, and uh, she'll be here to answer any questions that you might have. This is, this is something we've been doing over the last few years, is having curriculum leaders come in and have a chance for, them, for you to hear uh, about the program and to be able to ask questions. So, Catherine, thank you for coming tonight. Uh, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here, and I'm very excited to talk about my department. I'm very <coughs> proud of all the work that we've been doing, and I hope that the town of Arlington is proud of this program as well, because I think it's rather phenomenal, if I do say so myself. Um, so I will get right started. So I wanted to just start with a little bit of a peek into what our classrooms look like, because certainly from when I studied language, things have really changed. So an important um, philosophy if you come visit our classrooms is the concept that we are using the what we call the target language to instruct our students. So if you come in, we follow the national standards. 90% plus of the uh, teacher of the mm -hmm. instructional time is in the language. That's a pretty big change. So it's sort of an immersive style philosophy. Um, and so that's something we've been really working on over the years to ensure that all the teachers have the strategies they need to enable the, that to be successful so that students can understand so they're not you know, overwhelmed or are able to follow along and um, understand uh, what the teacher is saying. And then in the past two years or so, we've also been trying to implement the 90% plus standard also applies to students. So really establishing an expectation that in this classroom when you come in, you're speaking the language. And that begins at level one. Uh, pretty early on, um, we established a rule with our students, and it's incredibly transformative. Um, so we're really beginning this in the middle school level. Um, all of the teachers are on board that this is an expectation that you speak uh, the language in the class, and students actually speak, ask permission to use English. But the, as I'll show you some of the testing results, the proficiency level of the students really skyrocket. This is just a really really powerful um, instructional method. Um, we try to focus on student-centered classrooms. Our goal is communication in the language. Um, it's not about um, grammatical forms or accuracy. Certainly that's a component of communication, but really the focus is on um, communicating using real-world purposeful uh, context for language use. Um, so this is just a couple photos I pulled just to show you um, some of the activities. Um, we actually brought in a guidance counselor, students prepared um, uh, a flyer for potential Spanish-speaking students who might come to Arlington and wanted to learn about, you know, the community, and the guidance counselors came in and kind of rated which one they thought would be the most helpful. Um, we also, whoops, use an activity called speed dating, which you can see on the left is really popular. You can know what speed dating is, so imagine ding, ding, move to the next partner, you're talking on a specific topic. It's really fun, very interactive. Um, it's very popular. We've also been doing, uh, trying to integrate more and more uh, Skype connections. So you're all familiar, of course, with the Arlington Teosinte uh, group. Uh, Elizabeth Dre is actually coming in next week again uh, to speak with our AP Spanish course. Um, and she's helped us set up Skype sessions with students from Teosinte and our AP Spanish students um, have been able to speak with them, ask questions. And we've been trying to do that as well. Um, we had a teacher last year who did a Skype connection with Columbia. So we've been trying to expand this as much as possible, so really bringing the real world um, into our classrooms. And then we have a really fun um, 
assessment, if you can believe this is an assessment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a gladiator uh, game in the eighth grade. It's a cumulative um, summative assessment. So we really want the, the, it to be fun and interactive and uh, purposeful. So that's just a peek inside our classrooms. Um, some of the important initiatives that we've been working on, um, the first, this is a really multi-year uh, process, is a thematic-based curriculum revision. Um, so we've been, um, for the past, I would say, two years, have been working on developing our own thematic curricula. Um, so this year, all of our level one teachers, and this includes all of the middle school, uh, was considered kind of a level one, including our level one high school teachers, are implementing new thematic-based curricula. Um, so these are common units across languages. Um, they're called what we call language agnostic, so it really doesn't matter the language, it's this kind of unit, um, and then the cultural components are adapted to the specific language. Um, so we really focused on uh, can-do performance targets. So for example, we have a home and family uh, unit, so what if I grew up in another country is our essential question, and the performance target, I can have a conversation about our home and family. So we're try really trying to emphasize the conversational skills um, in our classes. An important component of these thematic curricula are using uh, what we refer to as authentic materials. So in foreign language, that means it's made by a native speaker for a native speaker, so it's not this adapted, simplified, um, teacher-made text. Um, so just to show you some examples of what these look like, so we're using Pinterest to collect all of these. So you can see um, these are authentic resources. Um, the one on the left is from Mexico, kind of a, we have a, a nutrition, healthy eating unit. Um, so they're looking at authentic um, documents from Mexico, and then Mi Plato is from the United States, but in Spanish. And you can see how even a beginning level student can approach this um, because of the uh, the imagery and the structure of it um, and can make sense of it. So we're really trying to um, bring these in and these are important in for many reasons but not the least of which is it's building kind of problem solving and critical thinking skills when you look at this and you maybe understand you know 80 percent. Um, so here's another one, a school schedule. Um, you have to use a lot of deciphering skills to try to figure out the rest of it and that's something that we're trying to teach um, in our in our units. Um, we're really phasing out the use of textbooks in the modern language uh, program. So as we're implementing the that thematic based curriculum, the textbook's still used as a support, but it's really no longer the driving force of the curriculum, um, which is an important shift. Um, so this year we have uh, two teachers that are piloting a level two and three curriculum, and we're also having a group revising and trying to finalize that, and then we're hoping next year we can roll out for all of our level two teachers um, a common uh, level two and three sort of intermediate level curriculum. Can you just explain level sure. one, two, and three? Is oh, it? I'm sorry, yeah. sure, sorry. So the middle school program uh, is sixth, seventh, and eighth, mm -hmm. um, at the end of which most students enter into a level two course. Um, so if you think a level one is really, uh, they're attaining a novice high level of speaking proficiency, and then in the level two, we're looking at a low intermediate Level three, we're hitting a mid, intermediate mid. Mm -hmm. The intermediate takes a long time to kind of progress through that um, as a language speaker. Um, and we offer up through level five is the highest level, which would either a 5A, curriculum A, five honors, or an AP. Okay. Um, so in a high school, if a student followed the full sequence, they would go up through level five mm -hmm. at the high school. Okay. Sorry. Um, another part of the thematic-based um, units is um, what are called Integrated Performance Assessments, IPAs. Um, so these are replacing um, the traditional chapter tests that you may yourself have experienced in your language program. Um, so they provide students with real-world real world contextualized scenarios for when they might actually be using the language and have them do a little bit of research, do some speaking with a partner, and come up with sort of a, a final presentation of some kind. So there's three modes that they kind of go through. I won't go into those in detail, but they're sort of circling around a specific topic. So I won't read this over for you, but just in a nutshell, so we've come up with a scenario. This is in our food and nutrition unit where we're imagining that there's a group of exchange students coming to Arlington from a specific country, and you want to help them find healthy eating choices in the school cafeteria. So you need to first understand how, how, what is healthy eating in their home country? So what is that considered? You know, that's an important first step. And then what types of food would students from that country actually like? And then you're comparing it to your own culture and saying, okay, well, what's offered there? What's offered here? What might these students 
um, enjoy when they come to the cafeteria and also be able to eat healthfully and so on. So you can see we're bringing in those authentic resources, the sort of um, you know, the nutritional guys from various countries, they're having conversations with their partners, um, and then they're coming up with a final flyer presentation of some sort in which they um, make some recommendations for these, um, these hypothetical exchange students. So just to give you an idea of what, what that curriculum um, looks like. Um, so something uh, uh, along with the revised curriculum that we've been working on is um, proficiency testing. So we were fortunate to get a grant from AEF a few years ago and um, were able to do a sample uh, testing of the proficiency levels of students, of a, of a sample of students, kind of get a sense um, you know, are we hitting um, the targets that we're coming up with? Are our common assessments in line with what we're hoping our students are achieving? Getting a little bit of external data. Um, and then very fortunate that the district picked up the cost for the past few years. Um, and we'll also be testing a group this year. Um, so we use different assessments for the different languages. Um, so STAMP for our Italian, um, it's called the Standards-Based Assessment of Proficiency. So students are attest in their, uh, assessed in their speaking um, and their listening skills. Um, Apple is the actual assessment of performance towards proficiency, so we use that in French, Mandarin, and Spanish, and it's really nice. It's got like an interactive kind of a Skype video type thing where they're asked questions, they have to respond spontaneously. Um, so it's a really nice performance assessment. And then the Alira is the actual Latin interpretive reading assessment. Um, so we were able to test just over 300 students last year. Um, we're hoping to test the same amount, possibly, if, po yeah, if possible, the same exact students, so we can really see are they making progress. And we also want to make sure that the results we got last year um, are, are valid, that they're, they're not we're just a one-off year. So we've set the proficiency target. So as I was mentioning to your question before um, about mm -hmm. the level, so you can see uh, we've got what we call our pathway to proficiency. So in the Elementary, uh, the middle school, uh, we're really trying to hit a high novice speaker, and then in level two, which would, if they follow the full sequence, would be a freshman. We're getting intermediate low, and then we kind of, it takes a long time for students to build through the intermediate uh, levels up through hopefully advanced low is really the highest we're shooting for. And Mandarin um, mm -hmm. takes a little bit longer, not surprisingly, for students to get a higher level of proficiency. So what you can see here, um, this is the data from last year. Uh, what's in the box? Um, oh darn it! I thought that was going to do that. Um, sorry, this seems to. Cl I just wanted to do the arrow, and it's kicked me out of the presentation. Sorry about that. It's okay. Um, so what you can see in the box here, um, that's, the that's the proficiency target that we're shooting for, and you can see. Um, what's uh, shaded is where the percentage of students that were hitting in those various groups. So we were very encouraged. Um, you can see the French, uh, where you see the target. We do have, in most cases, the majority of students are meeting or above the proficiency target that we've set. So we found that was really encouraging. We saw a similar uh, scenario. Not everybody, but you can kind of see, again, that black box is where the, um, the proficiency target was, and then the blue is where the students, you can kind of see a progression up as the students go up over the years. Um, is the proficiency yeah. verbal? And it's Sorry, this is a sp uh, oral proficiency. Oral proficiency. Correct, okay. yeah. The, the assessments <clears throat> do test in the, what you traditionally are the four skills, the reading, writing, speaking, and listening. We've been focusing on speaking um, primarily because it's, well, first, I think it's the most important reason that you want to learn a language, um, but also that, you know, historically and traditionally, teachers tend to favor written, um, and I really wanted to put an emphasis on speaking. So these are for speaking. Thank you for asking. So how would it work? How would, a, how would an oral proficiency test work? <laughs> so it's, um, so as I just mentioned, it's, they have a, they go into the language lab, yeah. they have the headsets, the microphone. Um, and it gives them a series of prompts. It looks like a Skype conversation. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you have the person asks them, they start something simple like, oh, hi, my name is so-and-so, what's your name? And then it, it's a simulated conversation. So scored. then the head kind of nods and waits for you to respond and you, oh, you provide funny. your answer and it records it and then it's, it's assessed. And it's scored in, by It's the... not scored live, it's scored by an actual person. So oh. it takes a couple of weeks for us to get the results. Okay. 
It's, so it's not a multiple choice assessment. It's a it's a performance assessment. And it's scored by a person. It's right. scored by a, a person. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. That's okay. <clears throat> Please do. This is all like obvious to me, so I appreciate the question. Yeah. Um, so as you can see, we're we're really happy. We're hitting for the most part at or above the target in our Spanish. Um, come on, clicker. Can you Sorry. just hit the down? Yeah, do you mind? I don't know why this is not always working all a second ago. Might be you the just battery. click to the next one. Oh yeah, it might be the battery. Arrow down. Just the down. The down arrow. <laughs> not responding to you either. You know, I heard that this was up. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Here you go. Okay. So are you going to sit there for me, Robert? <laughs> <laughs> um, in Mandarin, we were so excited. The middle school, this is actually uh, rather outstanding. Our middle school, seventh grade, we had students that were testing novice high and intermediate. And then even in eighth grade, we had students that were testing in the intermediate in the oral proficiency. So we're really excited about those results. We did see some regression in the high school. So that's an area of, imp of improvement. So we want to Again, we want to test again this year and make sure that's a valid uh, result, but we are kind of watching that. Okay. Um, Latin, our students, this actually, they flew well beyond and above our proficiency targets and to the point that we were like, our, you know, we think our kids are strong, but this is maybe a bit too high, so we're kind of trying to get some, some national data and sort of get, find out if this test is really testing what we think it is, but in any case, we were you know, delighted with these results. Um, Italian, um, so it tested in the speaking and listening separately. So this one actually, because of the structure of the test, it tests both the listening and the speaking. Um, so we found that our students were exceeding the targets for listening, but struggled a little bit with the speaking. So again, questioning whether that's an area we want to work on um, improving. Um, I just wanted to also take a minute to highlight some of the enrollment um, uh, news, I guess, in the department. Um, the most significant piece of news regarding enrollment in the World Language Program is our French enrollment. So we have seen a doubling of enrollment in the French program beginning in the middle school and the students have hit the high school this year. Um, so just to sort of give you a sense of what that means, if you go back to 2012 in our eighth grade French program we had 37 students. The following year 52, 44 the next year, and then in 2015-16 we have 88 students. Um, and then 82, and this year we've got in the high 80s as well, I think our sixth grade may be at 91 at this point. Um, so that's a doubling of enrollment. And I will gently just acknowledge that we haven't added any French staff, so we've been a little bit squeezed um, with that. And the kids have now hit the high school and the program um, there, you know, is, it's, it's great news, but, um, you know, we are a little bit tight. And you'll just, as a point of comparison, the eighth grade Spanish, you can see at the bottom, that same year when we had 37 French students, we had 133 Spanish students. Fast forward to this year, we only have 143. So while we've got 10 more Spanish kids, we've got more than double the same amount in French. Um, so it's just sort of interesting um, that more students are choosing French than they uh, had previously. Um, the Mandarin program, so we uh, were able to get Mandarin to the middle school a few years ago. Um, Mandarin's been a little bit slower to pick up an enrollment. Um, we're excited this year that our seventh grade, so last year we had 21 students in the seventh grade Mandarin, and this year we have 61, so we're really encouraged about that. Um, it's just been a slower language to pick up in kind of popularity um, throughout the district, but it's finally starting to kind of uh, to take off. And the enroll, uh, Italian program, um, we started, we uh, launched it back in 2013, um, and we've been able to grow, and that's been thanks to a grant from uh, COSIT, um, and have been able to grow from a level one through four, so we now have a four-year Italian program. Um, and just this past week, um, we were in discussion with the Italian consulate, who is giving us uh, a grant for an after-school AP Italian um, a course. So our Italian teacher will be offering, I think we've got eight students that will be doing after school studying um, for the AP Italian. So that's entirely grant funded from the Italian consulate. So we're really <coughs> excited about that. So actually, can you just go over for sure. the audience, um, which languages are offered at the middle school level, which sure. languages are offered at the high school level, Absolutely. and um, and are any of them sort of 
um, threatened because the grant is about to go to go away, or are they all sort of are we committed to to all uh, of them? Yeah. So at the uh, middle school, we currently have French, Spanish, Latin, and Mandarin. Mm -hmm. Um, so as I just mentioned, Mandarin's been in the middle school just for a couple of years, um, so been growing that. The high school, we have those four languages, and we also have um, Italian, and that was thanks to a grant from this organization called Kazit. The grant from Kazit only covers a small portion, so it covers about, I think, two-thirds of one class for one of our teachers, and the district is covering the rest. Mm -hmm. As far as we know, um, it's a yearly grant, renewable grant. Um, we don't know from year to year how much we're going to get. They've assured me we're going to get the grant again next year. They're very happy that we're going to be offering the after school Italian mm -hmm. uh, for AP, um, which is something they're really trying to encourage. Um, so I guess I feel some confidence that that will continue. Mm -hmm. um, but those are the only grants that we have that are supporting the staff. Okay. Does Great. that answer your question? Yes. Thanks. Okay. Um, you'll also see, I just pulled these figures, the overall enrollment um, in the program as a whole has increased. So if you just go back to 2011, 12, at the high school, 73% of students were taking a language and we've now grown to 84%. So we've seen, uh, we think more students sticking with their language um, over the years, which we're very excited about. Another component of our program, um, to your question about what's offered, we also um, have an elective uh, online language offering. These are through Brigham and Young University. They have online high school uh, credit courses, and we offer students American Sign Language, Arabic, Japanese, Korean, German, and Russian. And this year we have 18 students that are taking one of those languages. So those are an elective. In addition, it gives them a nice exposure to the language. Um, but some of the students taking them are just incredibly passionate about those languages, so we're excited to be able to, to make that offer thanks to technology. Um, go ahead. So um, a couple sort of things that have been going on um, beyond the program, uh, one of which I spoke about last year at the school committee is the Seal of Biliteracy, um, which is an award um, that recognizes students' proficiency levels in English and one other language. So we piloted that last year. Um, we were very excited to have, um, so last spring we had 51 students that we assessed and 41 of them qualified for the Seal of Biliteracy. So this follows state guidelines. Um, so the State uh, Language Association working with um, an English Language Learner Teacher Association has established guidelines that we're following. Um, so we have a lot of students that are testing. Uh, there's three levels, platinum, gold, and silver. So our students, um, you know, we had 19 that made the advanced low, which is the highest level of the seal. Um, and then we did test again this spring. I'm sorry, this fall, and we'll test again in the spring. So we had 15 students that assessed this spring, this fall, I'm sorry, 14 of whom qualified for the seal. So we've tested in languages, uh, French, Latin, Italian, German, Portuguese, Spanish, um, and this year we had three students that submitted portfolios um, for Japanese, Polish, and Western Armenian. So we're really excited. Um, the students, those students obviously are not studying the foreign language program. This is a home language that they have demonstrated proficiency for. And this is actually going to go on their <coughs> uh, transcript and gives them a chance to show the colleges that they've got this skill that they're bringing with them that would, they'd never be able to show them otherwise. Just go ahead. These are just three of our award winners from last year. These were our three seniors, and the rest of the students were juniors. And I will just take the opportunity to invite you on April 27th. We're going to be having a big award ceremony for all of these students and a few others. So I will give you a formal invitation later, but please mark your calendars. Um, another program that we launched last year is the Global Competence Program. Um, this is a program that exists in a number of neighboring districts, and it's really an interdisciplinary certificate program. Um, for students. We had five of our current seniors successfully completed the program in September. Um, in it, they have a, a number of requirements, academic component, uh, community service, travel, um, and then they have to complete uh, what's called a global engagement project. So as you can see from these titles, we had students who uh, studied the involving gender roles in Peru, um, who studied Korea. That's actually one of the students who's taking the online Korean, um, investigated the two Koreas a student who wanted to study Nazi Germany um, and Italy's government and so on. Just go ahead. So you can see the evolving gender role. She did a really nice uh, video presentation and then another student made um, a collage about the two Koreas. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I'll briefly highlight some of the travel. Uh, we're trying to expand and, and give our students the opportunities to experience the language in the culture where it's spoken. Um, she could click Rob. Um, this year we are running the France Exchange as well. I know you're all familiar with that. That's been a long-standing uh, program um, that we've been running. The students came to visit us in October from France and we are going in April to stay with them. Uh, we are launching this year, uh, in April as well, a new trip for our middle schoolers to Montreal, so they'll get to speak some French up there. Uh, we are expecting a visit from students in Beijing. I think many of you may have hosted some of these uh, teachers. Um, I know someone did a dinner at some point, uh, one of the school committee members for our students from Beijing, but this is from the same school in Beijing that we've been working with for a few years, so they'll be here in January. Uh, next year, we're planning again the Quebec homestay. I think this would be the fourth year we would be running it. And then we have some new uh, exciting exchanges under works that we haven't yet presented to you guys for approval, but will be soon. One is a exchange with a school in Barcelona that we're working on for next year. And one is an exchange with a school in Florence um, in Italy for our uh, Italian exchange students. And then we have some initial uh, planning for a, a student trip for our Latin students to Rome. So that's uh, also coming down the pike. Um, I also just want to make sure the School Academy is aware that we offer National World Language Honor Societies in all five of the languages that we offer at the high school. We just launched the uh, Italian Honor, Honor Society uh, last year. Uh, so those are among the students that we recognized at the award ceremony in April. So we have had I think upwards of 50 students every year that uh, qualify for the Honor Society. Um, and then we also have a number of extracurricular um, clubs, activities, and other awards, um, one of which is the uh, Kurtaman competitions that our Latin students have been participating in very, very actively. They're meeting almost weekly to prepare for these and are going all over the place to compete. Uh, we have a number of language clubs. We've been raising funds for the Arlington Teo Sinte group through um, selling handmade pulseras um, from local artisans from El Salvador, um, both in the middle school and the high school. We have got a French club, a uh, Spanish club, very active. Um, you may be familiar with the Café Parisien, the uh, junior year um, French project that Veronique Leahy launched a number of years ago, which is still ongoing. If you're not familiar with it, you can think of the show Shark Tank, where you have to come up with um, a business proposal um, to open up a restaurant in Paris and then defend um, your proposal. So it's very exciting. And we also have been offering annually um, the National Language Contest in French, Spanish, and Latin, and we always have had um, national level winners at the highest level, so we're really excited about that as well. Um, I hope you are aware, but last year we were awarded the exemplary, exemplary French program with honors from the American Association of Teachers of France. We had to put together a very rigorous portfolio and were um, the first school in Massachusetts to be awarded this um, award. Um, so very excited about that. And we've had also a number of I well, won't read them over, but a number of French students that were um, received various awards in oral competitions, summer travel scholarships um, at last spring that I just wanted to bring to your attention. And finally, I just really want to highlight the teachers in the department and how active they have been, um, not only within their classroom and providing really high quality teaching for the students, but also sharing their knowledge uh, with the larger foreign language community. Um, so we have teachers that are presenting uh, nationally, um, Abby Holt in the middle school, uh, Anne Zachary, Lan Nalu Hogan, who you can see on the right, um, as well as myself presented at the ACTFL, which is the national, because um, over 9,000 people attend, um, made presentations there um, at this foreign language teacher conference. We're presenting regionally. Um, I went with a group of two teachers to MassQ, the Massachusetts Computer Using Educators Conference, to present on ways that we're integrating Skype and other technologies. Um, last year, I was invent uh, invited to speak at the DESE Fall Convening about uh, the assessments that we've been using um, as models for other districts. Um, and Veronique Leahy has brought, um, as you see on the top right photo, um, group of students to uh, present at the Regis College, College Project-Based Learning Conference, which she's been sharing on that Café Parisien po project um, as well. So I think we've got a really active um, and dedicated group of teachers, and mm -hmm. um, I hope uh, 
Arlington feels proud of this program uh, as, as strongly as I do. So I would open up for questions. Thank you. Great. Uh, Mr. Slickman. Well, it's obvious that you have a lot of pride in your department and the work that's going on and that uh, every year you seem to be raising the uh, bar and improving our uh, world language program in the district. And I think that uh, the data you're presenting and the uh, narrative you have is quite commendable. Uh, Thank you. Um, go back a slide. Who, oh, who, sorry. who was the... Who was the, the casualty the in the yeah. lower left? Yeah. You know, you, you don't too. put a slide uh, up of a <laughs> that one. Uh, somebody <laughs> lying on the floor looking quite dead without uh, uh, attributing. <laughs> So that is actually our uh, phenomenal middle school Latin teacher, Abby Holt, who presented at this ACTFL, the national conference, uh, which is very selective to be accepted to present there. And I'm not sure exactly what she's doing. I'm <laughs> fairly certain she's casting a spell in Latin and has um, well, she means very done very something that language to the person. Or something. <laughs> um, the one, the one thing that, I, that fascinated me uh, was that you talked about the uh, conversion of the classrooms to an immersion model so that once you walk in the door you need to speak that language mm -hmm. uh, and I'm thinking of those first year kids in September who are walking in knowing yes. nothing of the language how long does it take before you're able to at least get the basic classroom commands and uh, and phraseology so that you can run a class for a day without reverting to English and how difficult is that I hope I won't shock you it's day one level one mm -hmm. so the first day is entirely in the language um, we do this by a lot of uh, body language mm -hmm. so you can imagine all the classroom commands raise your hand sit down take out a piece of paper that you can show the students while you're telling them mm -hmm. um, there's a strategy called TPR total physical response where you give a prompt a command and the student doesn't need to speak, they just need to show physically that they understand what you're telling them to do. That's extremely effective, particularly at the beginning um, where you're doing this type of thing. But it's actually amazing. So yes, students, it can be a little scary that first day when you walk in and the teacher's speaking only Spanish. Um, and they truly, I think, are amazed themselves at how quickly they can understand and follow along what's going on in the classroom. Um, it takes strategies, uh, the, the pictures, the, the visuals, mm -hmm. the body language, cognates, certainly in French and Spanish, are hugely helpful. You know, the word for question in French is question. So you write that on the board and, oh, I, you know, you don't need to translate it. You've, you've shown them pretty quickly what it means. Um, so there's a lot of strategies and it takes training. So that's why I said when I, you know, I started here, I would say we were around 50-50. So some teachers were using the target language, some teachers, you know, needed some support. And so that's something that we've really worked on ensuring the strategies there first. And then it, it's really amazing um, how effective it is. Um, and then establishing, you know, week two, week three, a no English rule in the classroom. <coughs> it's, such, it's it, again, it takes strategies and it takes training and practice, but it's incredibly effective. And I do think the teachers at this point um, are able to do that in an effective way where students feel supported. Excellent. I, I, it's that's, exciting. That's I, and I would love for any of you, if you'd like to come in, um, the middle school la uh, Mandarin classroom is is rather outstanding uh, to come and see what's going on in there. And you're like, oh my god, I'm in Beijing, and the kids are all speaking Mandarin. Um, so it, it really works. Yeah, Dr. Red. Dr. and I met <laughs> with um, what was the name of that gentleman who designed the the language programs in Utah? Uh, we had a visitor from Greg Duncan, yes, who yes. came last year, mm -hmm. and. One of the things that, that I learned in that meeting with him is that this is best practice. Mm -hmm. That the old way of translating, a teacher translating <laughs> what they're being said is, first of all, it's created a generation of people who don't speak. Mm -hmm. So I want to applaud um, uh, the whole department and Catherine in particular for her leadership in this because it really has been quite transformative in terms of the performance of our students. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I agree that what is the goal is to be able to communicate. And if, if they can go and talk <coughs> in a language, how wonderful is that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Allison, MP. Um, I had a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. First, this is really wonderful. 
Um, so I'm wondering what you said that you're trying to phase out textbooks, and I'm wondering what will kids have as reference material when they're trying to do stuff at home? Um, <coughs> yeah, so well, we've truthfully been developing a lot of the resources. So the kids are getting, so we're using the, the shift has been the textbook dictates the curriculum, and we go through the chapters, to we've come up with our units, and maybe we're pulling a piece here, a, a piece there from the textbook. Um, there are so many online resources available today. Um, I know a lot of teachers, um, I'm thinking of one who's put together um, a YouTube page where she's found um, presentations that help explain the different concepts for students. Um, other teachers are making their own, you know, it's the flipped, concept, uh, flipped classroom concept um, where they're creating their own references um, or supports for students at home. Um, but it's really a shift. The reference materials tend to be, I'm sure, I imagine what you're thinking of is like a grammar explanation. Um, and that's something we're, the grammar is important as long as it helps with a communicate, communication goal. <coughs> And we really want to step away from getting, having students be bogged down in heavy grammar explanations, which really don't help them communicate or learn in the language. So the grammar explanations are really um, subsidiary to using the language um, and speaking with it. So it's sort of a shift. So I, would, I guess I would say that. So the teachers are pulling together resources from different areas, some textbooks, some online. Um, some video and so on and so on um, to help students. Mm -hmm. And I will just point out that for Latin is the one exception because it's really a reading based curriculum. We do need to have a book. Um, so that's not uh, the area that we're, we're leaving the textbooks. Okay. And then the other question I had was about the online courses. And mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if you could explain how they work logistically mm -hmm. for the students. Sure. So. Um, uh, we're offering them as an elective. Um, there is a small fee, uh, however, so students will sign up through BYU. It's around $200 for a year. It does offer a scholarship, um, so I've had, and they've actually been fairly generous. I had two students this year alone who got almost full. You know, if it's $200, they paid $20 um, for the course, um, and the district, I think, in at least one or two cases, has paid ourselves for a student, so we've tried to be conscious of students who may need some financial support. So students register online through BU, and I'm actually the person that facilitates them, so I'm their official proctor for the course, so I can see their grades, and I go through in PowerSchool and you know monitor their grades in uh, BYU and put the grades into PowerSchool. I'm in email contact with the students. They come by my office for questions or help. Um, I had two students come by today with a question because the end of the term's coming up. Um, so I'm sort of overseeing and facilitating. And then they do have a final exam that's mailed to me, so I'm the proctor for that exam. Um, but it's pretty nice. They also have online speaking component. I mean, speaking is the one piece that you feel like you would miss in an online course, and it really is. Um, but they try to compensate. They have what they call a conversation cafe, so students have to log in and have a conversation. Um, or for American Sign Language, they're having a Skype conversation to show their, um, their signing skills. Um, with, with them, but that's the logistical um, explanation. Um, are they doing it in the library? Are they oh, sure, sorry. So students are working independently on the course. Um, they are allowed to use the language lab. A number of them prefer to use the media center, so it's not a course that attendance is taken for. They work on their own, but I'm kind of monitoring them on a weekly basis. Some students do it at home, and that's fine as long as they're working about an hour a day on the course. Um, and, you know, I would say, I'm thinking of one student who uh, had some other issues and wasn't able to complete the course, but uh, I think all of our students have been very successful in these courses. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Mr. Hainer. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, first off, in that Latin assessment with the gladiatorial, was that a pass-fail? If no. they no, I meant I'm kidding. About <laughs> if they survived the bunk, that's all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the second part, I just want to share with you in uh, the military uh, language course. There's total immersion, and it begins with their first day in the dining room. And oh, if gosh. they do not ask for the, they get exactly what they <laughs> ask for. And then they learn quickly. Sure. So thank you for everything you've done. I no think it's problem. fantastic. Uh, Mr. Tillman. So the 98% all taught in the language, how, how do you measure that? How do you, so the this, this national guidelines 90%. So yeah. how do you measure it? Yeah, it's. It's a 48-minute class. It's 47 minutes, right? It, 
So that's a good question. So people get confused. I'm, I don't mean to get too into the pedagogy here, but the, people get confused. What does 90% mean? So 90% does not mean that I'm kind of timing myself. And yep. maybe if I translate a little bit here and there in English, I'm still like 90% of the time in French. That's okay. It means being conscious about when you're choosing to use and purposeful about when you're choosing to use English. Because there's that 10% that you say, okay, you could use English. So the times that it's appropriate to use English in a foreign language classroom are referring to the goal, uh, reflecting on the goal, um, you know, having students um, set goals for themselves. I mean, that type of thing, having, you know, even as sometimes assessment prompts, because the purpose of the assessment prompt is to kind of motivate and get the student um, engaged, that might be a time you're, it's appropriate to use English. So really, if you walk into the classroom, maybe you, and a lot of the teachers are at 100%, I will just say that, that they just don't want to speak English anymore. But it, what might be, a, and which is good, they want to, just the kids, the, you know, I'm in Spanish, that's it. But what might be appropriate is that the beginning, the first five minutes, I review the goal with you, I review the agenda, I ask if there's any questions, and they say, okay, now the rest of the class up until the last five minutes is 100% in French or Spanish, and then the last five minutes we reflect, okay, did we meet our goals? How do you think we did? Um, so those, those are when English is being purposefully used um, and thoughtfully. So not for, as, as Dr. Bodhi mentioned, these sort of translations that we want to avoid. So now I'm, I, I'm going to talk to my son all in Spanish now that I know this. <laughs> so that's it. You know, I was, I, I took, you know, I'm, took. I know you're fluent in Spanish. Yeah, and I, I wasn't going to. I know. But I took, I took Spanish years ago in college. And then um, when I went to South, when I went to Peru, I'm interested in the gender improvement in Peru. I was there about five years ago. I don't know how much it's improved, but okay, I'll, I'll take the <laughs> study for what it says. But <clears throat> I, I'll never forget in one of my classes, in, in a, one of the classes, which is all in Spanish, this whole thing I had to do for eight weeks, um, the the, the uh, inflections and the way they would talk. What was the what was the word you used? The uh, cognates. Uh, no, oh, no, no. The, no. Uh, the, the the way the, the way they the, the teaching method. The body body language. Yeah, body language. Yeah. <laughs> so in one class, uh, I, I, you know, I was I was yawning, and so I'll never forget how. That's why I learned the word bostezando. <laughs> Because she made fun of me in the whole class. Right. So, no, it's not ah. <laughs> Never forget it again. <laughs> Never forgot it. Yeah. No, but it's actually a good way to learn the, the word. Mm -hmm. And, and that's the word. total physical response. Total physical <laughs> <laughs> response. It's a total physical response. You get right in my face. So, and then I figured out what postesada meant. Right. You figured it out. Problem solving skills. Right. <laughs> uh, I was. I limited. I was limited. I made progress. So yeah. Thank you. Great. This is uh, very Mr. exciting. Carton. So I wanted to ask about the sixth grade program. So I guess sure. long before my time on the committee, there was a different program. Then we went through mm -hmm. the budget crisis, and that was changed to just like a survey program where they went right. through different languages over the year. And then last year, it was changed to they get to pick a language, and they only do that language for due date, two day every other day, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but then in seventh grade, they can pick it. Basically, they start all over again. So. How, how does that work? Why do we do it that way? Is, is, sure. is it only because of budget or? or um, yeah, it's been a couple of years. I've, it wasn't last year. I think it was at least two or possibly three. We have gone through a few different models with the sixth grade. Um, when I came in, it was a different model. We tried the what's called the exploratory model, which is problematic for a number of reasons. And then we said, you know what, we're just going to start the language. Um, so the current model we have is students choose a language in sixth grade. Um, and then they study, it's every other day is the way that we have the current program. And then at the end of the year, um, we give the student, we do give the students a choice of switching. So they're not officially, I wouldn't say that they're starting over in seventh grade. So we've got around 75% of the students that stick with their language, but there's a couple that want to switch. And the reason we did that this way is because we do have transfer students who might come in. We have a number of students that are don't take a language in sixth grade because they're in academic support classes. So we wanted to have a flexible program in the seventh grade to welcome new students in, so to not be exclusive. Um, so let's say 75% of the kids in the Spanish class took it in sixth grade, and then you got a few students that are new into the course. So this might, so yes, there's a review at the beginning of the year in the seventh grade, but because the bulk of the students have had the language before, it, you can go fairly quickly through it, and it actually brings up the level of those students who may not have had the language last year. So we're trying to strike a balance mm -hmm. where those few new students aren't going to be totally behind 
um, but it's also not a totally slow. Um, so there is, a, again, it's a review, but it's a fairly quick review then brings the, the students up. And we've tried to plan. It's not entirely possible because you're beginning the language, you're going to be repeating certain topics, but we've tried to think of different things that might happen in sixth that would happen then in the seventh. Um, but that's the structure of the program um, currently. So, you know, it's just a challenge when we're trying to find, um, we want to be inclusive and allow students in. Um, so if it were 100% of the kids were taking it all year and we knew that was it, you know, we could be stricter about that, but we've, that's the balance we've tried to strike. Does Great, that answer your you. question? Okay. Well, I'm going to ask the obvious question, yep. which is about Gibbs. Yep. Um, so we have a, we'll have a new school in a couple mm -hmm. of years, and so potentially the opportunity for a new model. Right. Um, do you have any thoughts about what you might recommend? Um, well, so yes, Dr. Bodhi and Dr. Jess and I have been talking a lot about what we could potentially do at the Gibbs. Um, so we haven't made any final decision. We've been thinking about some different scenarios. Mm -hmm. um, I think what's important for me, um, I think Arlington really should be proud of the diverse language offerings that we have. This is actually, if you look at other districts, you might find two languages. And the fact that we've got four in the middle and five in the high school is really, I think, a point of pride for this town. Um, at the same time, we're able to do that because we've got some larger schools. So we've got a mid-sized high school, we're able to, to do this. We have enough students that are interested that we can offer a range of languages. Mm -hmm. um, the middle school's been fairly large, so we've been able to, kind of, to pull off four languages. Mm -hmm. um, if we're moving to a smaller model with the Gibbs, which is what's going to be happening, um, it becomes really challenging to keep that high level of diversity with all four languages. Um, so I think we're, I'm, I hope we're going to find a balance where we can keep some of the linguistic diversity in our program while also recognizing the constraints around, um, you know, the, the smaller school, the staffing, um, the scheduling constraints and so on. So I think that's, um, I hope the direction we're, we're moving in um, with our ultimate program. So no decision has been made, but that's sort of some of our preliminary thinking. Okay. Actually, one more question um, sure. I've been asking of everyone. Um, so you've said a little bit about how you feel that foreign language has evolved over the mm -hmm. last you know, 10, 15 years. Um, where do you see it going in the future? So where do you see sort of us or Arlington evolving in the next five to 10 years? Um, you know, there's really, I've mentioned the word proficiency a lot tonight. There's a proficiency movement afoot. Um, it's something we've been talking about um, when I meet with other teachers from other districts or other department heads, you know, you ask the question, what is a one, what is a two? It's sort of arbitrary. There's a lot of discussion in other districts about, um, that I'm participating in as well, and really questioning, can we refocus our courses to really have a proficiency-based model where we're saying you're hitting a novice high, now you can move into the intermediate low group. Um, that's something that needs a lot of thought. It's a complicated change. It's just a very different program structure than the one that not just we're accustomed to in Arlington, but really every school I'm familiar with has. So people could, students could move at their own level, you're saying? Yes, yeah, okay. um, which is exciting, but presents, a, it's just a very different structure model. Sure. That's really where I see foreign language going is and in an, so in an ideal world, yeah, you could, when you've hit novice high, you can test out and move into the intermediate low. And some students, you know, I said that the intermediate can take a long time. Some students are much quicker. Maybe they already speak Portuguese at home and they can whip right through the Spanish up to the advanced level. So do they really need to go through level two, level three, right. level four? Could they move more quickly? Mm -hmm. um, but that's just not the structure we have right now. So I'd say that's something that we're, I've been thinking about. Um, and have had conversations about, but I don't think we're quite there to make that kind of a radical shift in the structure of our program, but. Great, okay. Thanks. Perhaps. Great, thanks sure. for uh, Thank coming Great. here and, and telling us about the program, and we've learned Thank a lot. Thank you so much. It's Thank really you. a pleasure to speak about a program, and I appreciate as well the support of the school committee and the administration in letting us run such a great program, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank thanks, you. Okay, um, so we have uh, sort of an open discussion about school committee uh, priorities um, for the budget. And actually, well, let me start, uh, Dr. Alice Nampi, do you want to sort of introduce this topic or is there something that budget can say at this point? <laughs> um, 
I guess I can talk about what budget, what happened at our budget subcommittee mm -hmm. meeting because it may have some pertinent, okay, pertinent great. to this. Um, so we reviewed the current revised um, ASK document, mm -hmm. uh, which unfortunately I don't, I'm not seeing on Novus. Um, uh, and right. we'll make sure we that, that it gets there. to yeah. you guys um, tomorrow, well, I guess, yeah, tomorrow. Okay. Um, but we reviewed that, we reviewed the uh, expectations for funds and, and what all we're going to have, and the bottom line is that we have even less money than we thought that we did, which okay. we'll hear more um, from Ms. Johnson later. Um, right now, the difference between what we're going to get and our kind of things that we have to fund, the, the salary increases and, mm -hmm. and step in line and all of that, um, leaves about $120,000. Um, so we also did some discussion of, is there anywhere else we could free up some money? Mm -hmm. um, and one of the ways that we are in discussion about is the possibility of using some of it. So over the past five years or so, we've been taking our circuit breaker money and keeping it until the next year and then right. spending it. Um, we're discussing whether since next year we're going to be getting a much larger amount of circuit breaker because money. this year has been so high. We ex if, right. un assuming that reimbursements are the same and, and everything. Mm -hmm. Next year we're going to be getting a lot more because we're spending a lot more this year. Right. We're discussing whether we could take some of that extra circuit breaker money and use it in FY18. Mm. Um, it certainly has small amounts of risk because you know anytime we decrease our padding we're more exposed if anything happens and can you explain our usual practice then would not be to touch that money till our usual practice would not be to touch that money until fy19 right okay and um mr Cardin has prepared something that would would say using some of it now and then sort of paying it back to ourselves over the next few years so that eventually we're back at the same, not touching it at all. Mm -hmm. um, we've asked Ms. Johnson and, and she's asked the appropriate staff member to get us a better estimate of how much circuit breaker money we would expect mm -hmm. assuming usual reimbursements right, and stuff. Right. Um, and we feel you know, the first thing is to understand, have an understanding of what the amount of money that we're talking about is. Mm -hmm. um, my back of the envelope calculation would say around 400,000 um, extra. Extra um, than this year. Yeah, extra, but, but that's that's yep. a very rough, not knowing any much mm -hmm. details and, and making guesses. Um, Ms. Johnson has put it at two or $300,000. Okay. Um, I mean, that's her back of the envelope. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about the possibility of being able to supplement that whole hundred and twenty thousand dollars with perhaps one hundred to three hundred ish. Mm -hmm. But again, right. this is all you know, we just started the discussions, we haven't got the numbers. Um and does this um I know that last time we spoke there was a discussion of sort of reserving a couple hundred thousand for possible increases in special ed costs. The that's, already, that's already built in. That's already built in. So, so that we're still making that assumption that those, that those, that amount is being reserved. Okay. I, I'm sorry. I couldn't hear what you so, said. So last time, um, there was a recommendation by, um, Ms. Johnson to, um, reserve, to save about $200,000, um, and not spend it for the possible increase of special ed costs next year. So, yeah, that's, so that's, that's yeah, that's okay. built into the yeah. base budget going forward. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the framework to give you yep. an idea. We'll know, it, it's gonna probably be a week or two before we have even the estimate of things. So maybe at the next meeting we'll have a better idea of, okay. of and, and we can discuss because, you know, this is our idea, it's, everyone has to, Right. agree to it right um and um 
I know there are people who are not in favor of it, mm -hmm. um, but we're concerned that there's big needs in anything. the schools and that this is not the best time to be sitting on big pots of money if we feel it's not absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, um, so why don't we, if people want to comment on that now, let's do that first and then let's go around and talk about um, what people's priorities would be for that limited amount that would be left. May I mention this one thing? Yes, yeah, sir. Um, we are also, we being the central office, are looking into the FY17 budget closely. And while we are not there yet in terms of what recommendations we would make for some reductions, um, we, that is one of our goals too, is to be able to free up some money going into FY18 as well. And, I, and as we work on that over the next few weeks, we will be presenting, uh, the superintendent's budget will be going to Swifties at the end of the month and not be presented till the February 9th. But I think by the time we get to January 26th, we'll have a much better idea as to what, some, what those numbers will be. Okay. Yes, Mr. Hainer. Just a question. <clears throat> Our budget going forward, and with all the concerns that we have going, we'll be entering negotiations with the teachers, with the staff next year. Next year. Is that something looking ahead that we have to be concerned with? Well, I think I'm not trying yeah. to scare anybody ahead. I don't know what our numbers will be exactly. I, I, I understand, but we're 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 looking at a budget right now that none of us are happy with, uh, with the, with what we got. And I just want to be prepared for everything going forward. That's all. It doesn't have to be answered tonight. So I have to say, one of I think our issues is that we've had a larger increase this year than we had last year, right? In terms of students, number of students, and since we always get paid. A year later, <laughs> we're getting paid for the slightly smaller increase from last year, but having to serve the larger amount of students this year, and that's you know that's just an issue. Um, but mm -hmm. okay, Mr. Stillman. Uh, so I have a, a couple of questions. Is the process in which you're going to be evaluating possible? savings based on you know your assessment of fy17 going to be complete by the end of the month or when are you going yes. to yes it is it will need to be so Could you'll <clears throat> you'll kind of you'll by the end of the month you'll complete your analysis and you, let's say you might shade you might find savings of x and then this process gives us another x why <clears throat> why <laughs> thank you um <clears throat> And then what, it equals Z? <laughs> <laughs> totally the finance Z, committee yeah. comes in, <laughs> we'll have a triple X May not operate. be the same number. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> we don't, so in other words, when are we going to have, uh, so the meeting on the, so before the budget goes to Swifty, we're not going to have a chance to, to know what the actual number is. We're not, right? We're not going to, so let's say that number is a half a million. That's optimistic. Okay. <laughs> say it's 350,000. Okay. Okay. We're not going to know that for sure. No, we're gonna we're gonna give you the proposed budget on the ninth. On the ninth. And then you guys have at it. Then it becomes your budget. And I you can do whatever yeah. you want. So it gets printed, but it's not right. set and in stone. Obviously, it's absolutely. printed. Absolutely, it okay. is it is yours to do with as you will at that point. Mm -hmm. okay. But um, mm -hmm. I'd like to, I'd like to say that my and I speak only for myself in this. I would hope that I can we can dig enough out of the FY17 budget so that we make that not a good option. You don't I, like that option. I hate that option, passionately. Yeah. Okay. And so if I can find enough money to meet our top priorities without doing that, right. I would much prefer to do so. Because you think it's too risky? Is that? I think Circuit Breaker is a movable feast, and part of the deficit that I enjoyed so much when I came here was due to a Circuit Breaker mistake and how it was budgeted. Right. I just don't think you should ever go down that road again. If we can meet the top priorities of the senior, of the senior administrators without doing that, we absolutely should. Mm -hmm. I asked just why. Can I get like a, I'd like yeah. to get a better flavor for the whole discussion. Yeah. So I mean, so I look yes. at it as as, as a yeah. time timing issue. So mm -hmm. we've had this increase this year mm -hmm. under this under the circuit breaker formula by the state. The increase they in spending. They, they, they fund you a year yeah. in arrears, right? Um, because they they can't fund you in advance because they don't know what your expenses are going to be. So you right. spend the money, and then a year later you get reimbursed for it. Right. We've we've adopted a very conservative approach where we actually wait an additional year. 
Yeah. So we've had this big increase, and we have to wait two years to get reimbursed for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that creates a crunch over that two-year period. So mm -hmm. what we're suggesting is shorten it mm -hmm. so that the crunch is only one year. And then we, we, we would ideally get back on this process because there are some benefits of having a firm number on the circuit breaker in your budget. Mm -hmm. uh, over, over time, uh, another maybe three or four years out, we'd be back on track, assuming stabilization right. and not another jump yep. that we have to deal with again. So, so to me, it's a timing issue. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we did have that one problem that was a crisis situation where circuit breaker was cut to 40 percent and nobody, nobody reacted. And, and I think, first of all, we're all much more aware of that. We're also in a much more stable environment. Mm -hmm. uh, and and we'll know mm -hmm. by the end of the month a pretty good idea of what our circuit breaker is going to be mm -hmm. So uh, for fiscal 2018, based on the governor's budget. It's not going to mm -hmm. be below that. So I think we're on very solid ground. We're talking about $300,000 at the most, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we have some dire needs. I mean, we, we can't um, do some of the things, do without some of the things that are required. I mean, if we get... 80 or more students at Thompson and Hardy, we have to add teachers at both of those schools right. in kindergarten. So, so I'm not talking about adding princ vice principals or, or funding sort of nice to haves. I'm talking about these core necessities. And, and I think the way we've done the timing is conservative and nice to have, but it's not something that we can live with this mm -hmm. year. And so just uh, in terms of people, do people know the timing? The governor's budget is coming out in when? Do we know? That's yeah, uh, early, early February. Early February, yeah, okay. So we'll Wednesday have a sense of, of it then. Last Wednesday of January. Okay, okay. You know, you, you'll, you'll get a sense and you'll be able to check with Desi because, you know, you'll know what the uh, governor has written into the budget for the circuit breaker line item. The thing you won't know is the denominator, the how much uh, how much claims from school districts will be there. Right. So that's sort of the variable that the plays percentage. out. Yeah. But there's a reasonable expectation or reasonable trend. So you, you can always get a budget number, mm -hmm. uh, a percentage of, uh, of your reimbursement that you're likely to get at this point. Desi's very willing to do that. So I, I do think that taking all the circuit breaker out and putting it in reserve for another year is an assumption that we might get zero circuit breaker and we're right. being defensive. Right. Now, we're not going to get 100% of the circuit breaker. We're not going to get zero. We're going to get somewhere in between. And if we take a very conservative approach at what that circuit breaker number is going to be, I see no reason why we shouldn't be able to uh, – Mm -hmm. meet a budget gap, particularly because we've got an extraordinary increase in our out-of-district payments that are generating more circuit breaker that we need to reimburse ourselves for. Right, right. Um, so actually, just a clarificatory question. Is this money then is put in a reserve account? It's, the a, survey? it's in a standalone, standalone grant account. Okay, okay. Um, Ms. Starks. So I'm wondering if we have done the analysis for like not just next year, but the year after and the year, like, do we know that it's gonna get better or is it gonna be tight like this for the next? Do we know that our budget situation is gonna get better? Yes, because we're talking like yeah. we're expecting more money mm -hmm. in well, we've the next had a, year we've had and I don't understand why we think that. Bigger group of students this year, so we know we're gonna get that money, right? <laughs> but that, that's, that's not a major chunk of money to depend on, you mm -hmm. don't believe, I, I, Sorry. So I would yeah. just really like to have see us before we do anything have that view. Mm -hmm. I would like to know, you know, if we just get what we know no, the town. Get. I mean, we 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 know, we know what the town is going to give yep. us. We know what we're going to get. I mean, if we just make those assumptions, do we know what it looks like? I mean, is it tight for the next five years, ten years? I mean, does it ever get any better, or is this like now we have to be in this really like tight like we're not going to be able to do much for quite a while. It's, right. it's tight until Kielin. we pass an override. Yeah. Yeah. Or we pass the uh, millionaire tax. <coughs> well, but, yeah, but there's no certainty with that. There's that. no certainty, but yeah, I mean, we have but, to I mean, negotiate I mean, with the town. But I mean, you know, the long range planning committee has been planning, mm -hmm. has been looking at this, and the numbers don't change until the override, which we're talking about in for 
fiscal FY20. And that's an assumption. Do I have that right? right? That's, that's 19 that possibly. Be, or 19. 19, but, it's right. Okay, but, so we're in a conversation. But we don't know that we're going to get an increase if there is an override. We, right. It could just be a. That's what even, I want to know. Are we going to yeah. change the formula may not, at that point? I, mean, well, I don't think that's not a. So, if, so we get them broad, yeah. the conversation is getting broad. But that's, I, I mean, I think, you know, mm -hmm. so that's, so the long range planning committee, Kirstie and I are on that committee. We're um, in a conversation about whether an override should take place in FY19 or FY20. <coughs> um, there's, a there's a feeling on that committee that the, the you know, the increase is always 10%, so it's going to be 10%. We haven't gotten to a discussion about what that increase should be yet. I think that's a conversation we should have, and I think there should be a lot of public involvement in that because we need to know how much money we actually need to operate the district. Right. So, right. well, and that's probably... changing with the more students we have. Yes. I mean, the problem is, is that the infrastructure we have was based on many fewer students, right. and now that we have more and more students, I mean, the requests that we're getting are all infrastructure, and, and, we, and can't, we, know, we can't support the students we have. I'm not wedded to the 10%. Yeah. I don't feel like the 10% yeah. is the way you have to go. But, but we also know we have a building that we're going to have to staff. So exactly. I, mean, I, that, I, I'm, I don't see things getting sort of looser, but given right. that we have a building exactly. that we have to staff. I mean, I feel like what, uh, what I see is our needs are growing, yeah. and... I don't see that we're going to have a lot of money year after year until we change how we're getting money. And right, so right, that's go. what makes no, me so, okay. nervous about doing this kind of thing. If we're going to, you know, yeah, yeah. and it just starts getting worse. Okay. Dr. Allison Ampey. Okay. You're right. We don't, I mean, we can try and do what you're talking about, but the bottom line is it's not going to get better until the formula is changed but we are coming to and, and we're coming to a point where we're going to need to discuss changing the formula because we're opening a new school because we're getting so many more students because the high school is going to be starting to be rebuilt and and i would expect possibly changing its program of studies and, and stuff um this is why we've been asking for the past couple of years the staff to provide a really detailed needs analysis, not just right. these are wants that we think, you know, the few wants that we think will drift to the top that we can fund. We're trying to find out what the real needs are and then how much they are so that we have information that we can then go and use to build a case for this is what the funding of the schools needs to be. Mm -hmm. um, another outside thing that's going on was I saw that that um, Senator um, Cheng Diaz has put in an amendment to try and get the foundation budget f more fully funded and that would be an absolute godsend yeah. right. um, so we can only hope and and push for that I mean um, millionaires by tax might help and, with that yeah. right yeah, so but. all of these things are kind of in the air mm -hmm. um, if we use the extra money from the circuit breaker, it does put off things for a year. <coughs> I don't think it makes us, cr we're not talking about using beyond the chunk that would need to be passed forward to maintain the current services. We're talking about kind of using that extra bit. Um, if we use, beyond that, then I think we'd be setting ourselves up to go into a crash later. Right, right. Um, it you, does mean that there, you know, the next year, we, can't, we probably can't keep doing this forever, but it gets us one more year of better funded services instead of <coughs> sitting on it and trying it. The bottom line is we can't, the current funding formula in my opinion does not adequately staff our schools as we grow right mm -hmm. right we had yeah. that same i know it's same supposed problem. to it yeah, doesn't yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It we, does. we when we did it we added only teachers and the needs for students and didn't realize that then the infrastructure was also no then we, the infrastructure started to balloon well, we, got, and we got what we, we could get we got what we could get <laughs> no, yeah, we yeah at the time right. 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 this is right. what we right. got yeah right 2011 yeah. right um Okay. So I think it'd be helpful to see a particular proposal out there, you know, you know, to, I mean, to get like real numbers and then what's a plan you said we might want right. to play and it back. And I, I think it'd be really useful to, to get that sort of on the table. Yeah. 
We pounds. can. We need to get the estimate, mm -hmm. which is right. Turning. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and by yeah, next meeting, could, do we think we can sort of discuss? It'll have to be. It'll have to be. Okay. Yeah. So that's that, that'd be really helpful. Um, okay. wait, Mr. Carden had something. Yeah. So so for I agree with everything Kirsty said. I mean, I do think the the formula is on the table. I think <laughs> you know going for an education only override should be on the table. Something that we need to discuss next year, uh, if if we're getting pushback on a townwide override that meets our needs. Um, so all that can be on the table. This particular problem, though, is, is special ed related. And we had a right. large increase this year. Right. And, and we do get reimbursed for it. It just that is, is the timing is a year later. Right. And our policy puts the timing two years <laughs> later. So that creates a, a two-year period where, uh, where we're making up the money from, uh, from, from elsewhere. This year, we're making it up from, from our reserve fund. Next year, we don't have a place to make it up from. Mm -hmm. right. So if we can dip into that other reserve fund and move that money forward, uh, that's what just solves part of that, that one little problem with, with this sudden increase in special education. Mm -hmm. If it happens again in two years, then we have the same problem. But yep. if it stabilizes, hopefully, uh, then it's not. And we can make up that money uh, more gradually. Mm -hmm. So so again, we, we can have a... a uh, more definite proposal once we know the number mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and hopefully it'll make sense to everyone okay mr. Hainer I like what you're presenting I, I, I see it going forward I'm nervous about taking from Peter to pay Paul so it's very important to have the facts and numbers yep, for, for the next meeting for this thank you very much for all the work Okay, so I know we're over schedule, but we haven't gotten to our main topic <laughs> which is that we we want to talk about our um, priorities as school committee members. And so I want to go sort of down the line and have each person sort of say where, you know, we've heard from curriculum leaders, we've heard from um, um, other people, um, and I want to sort of hear everyone's perspective. Uh, so Mr. Carden. Sure. So, um, you know, with, without seeing an administration take on what they think are the priorities out of the other, all, out of all of the priorities, mm -hmm. given that we may only have 300 or 400 or 1,000, um, you know, to me, uh, you know, unfortunately, we have to do what we've been doing in the past, and that's filling the classroom teachers. I think definitely at the middle school and the high school, we definitely need to add teaching staff because we've been neglecting those. Mm -hmm. We were able to add some from the sort of found money at the beginning of this year, um, but, uh, but those needs are definitely um, dire. Um, sort of the, the enhancement type things, like the assistant principals, uh, unfortunately, are going to have to wait. Um, and then I think the administration has to have a discussion amongst themselves, you know, is, is the high school dean position more critical than some of the other, you know, some of the curriculum materials that they, that they want? And, and I, I'm not sure where we fall on that. Um, as far as the elementary school principals, I understand, I hear what they're saying, um, but, I, but I, I, before we made that investment, even if we had the money, before we made that investment, I, I need a stronger case for that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I would, I would want to see more specifically what is the tipping point in other districts when they add mm -hmm. an assistant principal. Um, I do know there's, there's several other 400 student schools that don't have assistant principal that I'm familiar mm -hmm. with. So, you know, is it, is it 500? Is it 450? I, I, you know, is there a tipping point? What's, what's typical? What, what are those people are, what are those people specifically going to do? I mean, we've added <laughs> social workers to every school to help, it, to help address social emotional needs. Is there some other resource that we can add instead of having five assistant principals? Mm -hmm. Maybe there's sort of a floating assistant principal who mm -hmm. can, you know, go in a school, go in each school one day a week, or something else creative, rather than adding, you know, spending half a million dollars a year yeah. on on that need. So um, that's sort of my rough thoughts. Mm -hmm. Excellent, Dr. Allison Effie. So I'll confess that I spent more time trying to figure out where to find money than what, um, <laughs> and I'm still working on it, but. I think, honestly, I'm not sure there's too much to look past filling class, putting teachers in front of cl mm -hmm. classes, um, because I think that's going to use up almost all of our money mm -hmm. at the various levels. Um, and also making sure that we've got our special education needs funded, although I think they've been doing a little bit better than maybe some of the other things. Um, if there is some amount extra I'm interested in the possibility of maybe doing one assistant principal at the highest 
the school that either has the highest population or the highest need, you know, because those aren't always the same. Mm -hmm. um, even possibly part-time, doing it on a trial basis, mm -hmm. having some ideas of what questions are we going to ask as they do this and you know how can we find out if this is worthwhile or mm -hmm. or what the functionality is adding to the school so that at the end of the year we'd have a better idea of yes this is a good thing we should be doing or no maybe we should look at maybe adding another social worker or right you know something i, I understand that the principals are feeling stretched and i feel like the um with the changes in the teacher evaluations, that's added a lot to their workload, plus the social emotional things that are going on with kids. It, it, I can see that there there is a stretch with growing the growing populations that they probably could use some more professional hands that can do evaluations or something. Um, but I don't see us being able to fund very many, but I would wonder about doing some kind of a trial and looking at it as a trial and um, having a sense of how we're going to evaluate it at the year's end. Mm -hmm. Great. Mr. Sleepman. Um, the, the thing that resonated with me were the, the cries for help on the administrative and leadership level, mm -hmm. uh, partly because that's my life uh, in, in what I do. Uh, leadership counts and having great principles is really an important part of having a great school and if we create a situation where it's impossible for these folks to do the job that we're paying them uh, an extraordinary you know uh, uh, a significant salary at uh, we are losing uh, from one of the most important things of making uh, making a quality school doesn't mean that we need to add a second administrator per se uh, but we should be looking through any kind of a method we can to really thoughtfully analyze what our principals are spending their days on uh, are they being instructional leaders or are they doing administrative tasks and to find ways of removing those administrative tasks from the shoulders of the principals so they can focus on working with teachers working with families Work, you know, and doing the things that make a school great that only a principal can do. Um, Wallace Foundation funded uh, a study and it was done mostly outside of Massachusetts, I think entirely outside of Massachusetts, uh, of the School Administration Manager Project and uh, uh, basically bringing in somebody to be the uh, to do the administrative stuff in support of the principal to schedule the appointments to schedule you know to to go hunt down a substitute lunch monitor to go to do all the kinds of things that principals need to do in a reactive manner that takes away from their time of being an instructional leader within the building so um, I would think that we really should think carefully about what kind of a model we can provide to clarify the support that's needed on the elementary principles and to provide them something that is going to make their quality of life better and, and, and enable them to do the job that we hired them to do. Uh, the, the additional dean at the high school is very persuasive. When, when, when the teachers come in and say we need another administrator, uh, that's sort of a 95th percentile kind of thing. Uh, I think we should pay very careful attention to that. Um, I don't see us adding too much this year besides just sort of trying to, to, to stay where we're at right now in terms of providing lo as level of service as possible. But um, that, those, those are my thoughts. I'm not being overly ambitious with this. Mm -hmm. Ms. Darks. Um, I think, you know, I uh, think we have to, uh, I agree with what um, basically everybody said, which is, you know, teaching and learning has to come first, safety um, and health. And then if there's anything left over, I mean, the administration, I, I believe that the infrastructure is starting to really bear the strain of, of all the students that we have. and and wherever 
that need is greatest. So it's a big job of prioritizing, um, you know, all of that. You know, where is where is it that the cracks are greatest? We have to fill those first, mm -hmm. and then kind of hope that everyone else can hold on. Mr. Hainer. We've invested an awful lot of money, time, both administrative and teacher-wise on the new evaluation system over the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. I fear that it has potentially going to fall apart on the strain on the principals, especially at the elementary level. Um, I had a meeting today with Dr. Chesson to help me understand several things about teacher certification and evaluation and just looking at that uh, process for one teacher, the amount of time a uh, principal has to do with a professional teaching status teacher, which is about half the time right, and a brand new teacher, uh, is just horrendous. And all it will take in, in the schedule of time and everything, one disruption to call the principal for something that isn't unscheduled, mm -hmm. and that could have a ripple effect through the whole day mm -hmm. or through the whole process. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can remember 30 years ago, teachers being rehired because they did not have the support to improve themselves and they weren't improving and then all sorts of problems. We have a wonderful staff. Mm -hmm. We need to continue to keep that staff. So my number one priority is finding a way to get them the assistance they need. Mm -hmm. Some school systems, uh, Mr. Schlickman mentioned it, it may not be a full-time one. Some have a half-time <laughs> teaching position, half-time administrative position, just for the purpose of setting up time for evaluation every single day so that when those other needs calls that evaluator away, mm. that other person covers it. Uh, creative way. We, are a very, we have a very creative top administrative staff. Mm. The problem is we, they find ways of doing things when we don't have the money and people expect us to continue doing it. The magic wand is wearing out. Mr. Thiemann. Well, I, mean, I think it's been said that you know, we have to staff to enrollment, so we have to have enough teachers to teach the children that are going to be in the school district next year um, at, all, at all levels. I was very persuaded by the whole argument at, at the high school uh, about the need for an extra dean. Mm -hmm. um, having an extra dean in the high school uh, provides support to teachers. It allows, it, it, it gives more, uh, it gives more support for teachers and it makes sure that they are able to do their jobs and focus on teaching and learning and not discipline and other issues. And so, uh, there was a very persuasive case made for the dean. I think ultimately the superintendent and her staff has to make a decision about you know how high of a priority it is. But having heard that, I was persuaded by it, and I thought it was a, I thought it was a, well presented, and I was, I think it's the right way to go. And I'll give you my thoughts. Um, so one thing I've heard from the last few years from both teachers and administrators is how much time and how difficult it is to find substitute teachers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think it would be great if we could see a small bump, and I don't have clear numbers about what that's going to cost us. Um, it would also be really helpful to, and we've done this in the past, to hire sort of permanent floating substitutes that we could then deploy as needed um, that we know we can rely on rather than each day trying to scramble and find people. I, unfortunately, I think this is, we are a victim of the improving economy, and it's, um, there are just fewer people desperate for those kind of jobs that we pay, um, and that you know e even a large bump might still lead problems. And that's why I think it might be help more helpful to hire somebody. Somebody say, "You're here for a year. You're doing substitute teaching. Give them training." Um, on that matter, one of the things I was very um, intrigued by is. Um, the Audison principal's um, suggestion that we do more uh, training of our TAs, because that's something that I think that, given that we mm -hmm. can't pay as much as other districts, um, if we can offer training to people, that we can say, listen, this is a really good district to get your start in, and we can provide a lot of oversight and a lot of training for you, and that's something that might be um, extremely effective at a, at a relatively minimal cost. So those are the things I've I do think that at some point in the future we want to hire maybe half-time assistant principals, three for the district or something. Um, I was persuaded that um, the idea that, that this is a potential um, leadership channel, you know, that we mm -hmm. will have people who could assume leadership positions if we need it is, mm -hmm. is beyond, besides also the, the use that they'd be in the day-to-day -day operation of the schools. Um, 
I don't know if we can afford it this year, but I think, I think it should be a high priority for us mm -hmm. um, in future years. Dr. Brody, do you want to say anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we've been working on, uh, among all of the needs, what are the top priorities? And you've hit <clears throat> on basically all of them, though, though there are, are other ones as well that we really need to consider carefully. Um, as, as you heard tonight, how much the World Language Department is utilizing technology. Mm -hmm. And the one that we also heard, and uh, Jason Levy is here. Oh, is I'm the sorry, AEA. I forgot to <laughs> recognize him. <laughs> but the teachers want more technology support too. And so there's that issue of desktop support. There's the curriculum materials, and, and, and certainly um, one of the things that Mr. Card mentioned that the middle school, particularly the high school, has not had the FTE increases for staffing they need, and that is coming to a point of necessity. So there, that exists. But then there's also the necessity of when you get students at the elementary, there's a certain limit to how many students you can put in a class. So we're definitely staffing there. Um, so those are the biggies that, that we've also identified as well and keep trying to you know, get that even more uh, trimmed out. But the challenge is going to be is, is we're going to certainly work on the revenue side of things and what the assumptions are. And then we're going to have to match the priorities to that amount of money. And I think that's going to be, it is turning out to be a very difficult task and it will continue to be, but that's, that's our job to do that. And so you'll have a chance, we will do that over the next couple of weeks, and then you'll have a chance to weigh in as well um, as we go forward with all of this. Um, I don't know if we want to pass this on and yeah, see if, 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 if uh, Ms. Johnson Chesson or anybody. Dr. Chesson. Yeah. Um, certainly, uh, we have been discussing as a staff, and Dr. Bordy has summarized those. Um, I think the one other, um, or actually the two other things that I need to touch a base on are that we've put a, a great deal of money, um, both from the operation budget and the um, capital budget into technology mm -hmm. um, and we're putting a lot of technology into the schools um, but the amount of um, support that we have staff to help teachers learn to use that technology is far um, okay. less than we need and so we're going to have to make a little bit at least a little bit of movement on that um, otherwise we're just going to be putting good money after bad mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is when we look at the um, interventions that we're trying to put in place at the elementary schools um, half the time we can't get all the students that we need to get um, because those students are not accessible to us because of the schedule and that schedule is, is sorely constrained um, by uh, the limit of the uh, specialist teachers at the elementary schools um, and you know we're not able to get teachers together we're not able to to get students together in groups because because of the schedule we have um, some students that maybe missing parts of the core curriculum in, in uh, very few cases, but still mm -hmm. any case is too much mm -hmm. um, because of, of the specialist schedule. So those are, are two other things that I think we're going to have to look at. Ms. Johnson? Do you want to add it? You don't have to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we also know, and I'll add one. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <over here. laughs> it, it, the recommendation had been made to increase our learning specialists at the elementary. Mm -hmm. and. We, we see it as something necessary it, as we as we work as a district to narrow this achievement gap to make sure that all students um, are able to be successful. And one of the ways to do that would be to create more op more support for teachers in the classroom with special education teachers. Last year we made some inroads in that where we have now couple of schools with three learning specialists so that they are, can focus on only two grades rather than three um, but that's not across the district so that's that also remains out there as another un, unmet I, I think you know when we talk about the budget drivers being out of district tuitions um, right. students don't go from a general ed classroom out of district they go they go immediately they go right. through <laughs> special education and then out of district right so I mean the other piece that as I would say is a priority is we, we continue to talk about 
the demands of social emotional needs on students and we're talking about the demands that creates on principals and you know we have limited funds to do very little with um, I, I do think the director of social emotional learning slash guidance whatever you want to call that role really looking at the whole district and building the capacity of individuals within the schools to meet those needs mm -hmm. could be para training it could be staff training it could be building safe and supportive schools mm -hmm. teams I, I think again you know thinking about what will affect the largest amount and mm -hmm. get the most out of um, so that's where I would place my priority great thanks uh, mr. Hanner I just want to ask a question the the program that we had I don't know what it's called now. It used to be called Millbrook, and we were talking about probably expanding that into the, the middle school and stuff. Is, 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 are we looking to increase the funding in that to make those things happen? I'd, I'd like yeah. to make, let me, let me rephrase that. I don't, want, I, I don't need, we're, we're on time now. I'd like to make that even a higher priority, I think, uh, than what I said before, only based on the fact that I think that saves us an awful lot of money in the long run. I'm being very, uh, materialistic about it in that uh, potential aspect of it we're meeting on this very topic next week um, about what to do um, we also don't know what the effect yet are going to be of the new regulations that, that kicked too. in so that's another um, unknown and, and another and unknown is where Millbrook's going to be yeah, next location. year the whole sp special yep. education thing may change this is a Supreme Court uh, oh, yeah, case, yeah. case going right, right yeah, now if they up the if they up the ante on that that's going to have a phenomenal. Um, I don't want to even go there. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. So um, I know we're over schedule, but I think this is an important discussion to have and to have fully. Um, uh, next, we're moving on to the monthly financial report. Do you want a motion to vote? Oh, do we need? Oh, we need a motion. <laughs> You're right. I'm sorry. We, yes. we need a motion to vote yeah. the number that we are receiving from the town yep. and, so, and so um do we want to read it so move that the school committee accepts the proposed town appropriation amount of sixty million nine hundred twenty eight thousand four hundred eighty five dollars for the fy 18 school department budget second great okay um motion by mr steelman seconded by mr hayner um any discussion dr allison Ampey? i'm just going to make the statement that we've had discussions here before that this year we are not we recognize that we have a lot of unmet needs that we will not be able to meet with the budget um, but we are choosing not to try and push our number we're, we're going to work within the number that the we're, number given, we're getting yeah um, okay this year great uh, mr. Carden yeah so I'll, I'm going to abstain because um, I, I think this process is still the wrong way to do things I understand that Town manager needs to put something in his budget, mm -hmm. but for us to agree to that without actually getting our own budget together first just seems backwards to me. So mm. I'm going to abstain. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, time to vote. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Um, abstention. Uh, oh, so, so anybody opposed? Well, no. And abstentions. So we have two abstentions, Mr. Cardin and Mr. Hayner, and the rest is is. And I. Okay. Uh, great. So, uh, monthly financial reports. Johnson. Hi. Um, the as you know from the memo, um, I uncover after digging down deeper into the overage in longevity, I discovered a completely nasty surprise. I guess the best thing that can be said is I'm not handing it off to my successor. <laughs> that I found it before then. Um, we added. We rolled in a lot of teachers. And the way longevity works, it's not as easy to capture out of the payrolls. It, there's no real easy way to capture it. We had been, with the exception of my very first year when we were in deficit, every other budget year our teacher longevity had hung around 200,000 plus or minus maybe 10. It was very static. And for FY18, it's going to be up to 360,000. And that, that change didn't happen overnight. It happened over the course of 16, 17, 18. I didn't do the end of the year report because I was out, so I didn't catch the change in 16, and I didn't I didn't see it coming when I did 17. So we caught it now. That's the best that can be said. And just for the public, these are for um, teachers who are with us for how many years? In their 13th year, they become 13th year. Eligible. They become eligible for a. And it goes up in gradations over other periods of time. Mm -hmm. uh, just as a footnote, that 
I think it also speaks very loudly to the fact that we teachers are staying in Arlington mm -hmm. and they stay here for a lot of very positive reasons. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Once again, yeah. I'm a victim of our success. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Hainer. Ms. Johnson, I'm not grading the numbers up, but this will not go down, it'll increase for a period of years unless a lot of teachers that don't get there decide to leave. No, you're gonna see upticks in 19, 20, 21, unless okay. things Thank turn you. really ugly. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I totally decide to retire. Uh, so other, other points you wanna make before we open it to questions? No, okay. Uh, questions, comments about um, monthly reports? Did you have any of them? Anything else? Uh, I had a series of questions. I managed to lose it all. I'll talk to you okay. <laughs> offline. You know where to find me. Thank okay. you. Yes. All right. And I, I don't actually. I, I, I've looked, glanced at them, but uh, questions from last time. To clarify answered. again, yes, I, I think I asked this last time. The variance, the $821,000 variance, we're making that up how? Um, I, mean, I realize we're I, only. I in I'm still concerned. I'm still very conservatively projecting but there are some lines that we can really pick up some savings based on what I've seen so far um, so I think some of it we will make up with savings mm -hmm. I think the majority of the special ed out of district overage we can make up with the reserves we have ourselves and the 325,000 that's with the town mm -hmm. so I think we will close this gap I think the gap will narrow assuming I don't kick over any stones and find any other ugly surprises like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think, the, I think the, it will narrow as we approach the end of the year if you know snow stays good and all the other things happen. Right. I don't think we'll end anything like that big Okay. if things continue as they have started. That's what I wanted okay. to clarify. Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> is this our, your last meeting with us? No. No? I will be here on I will be here at the end of January and I will be here in February to discuss the budget and okay then great. I'll be done okay <laughs> great thanks uh, okay school calendar uh, this is for a first reading and not every any everything is on there but some crucial stuff is dr. buddy you want to walk us through it yes I would be happy to do that um, Eventually, we probably will be able to get to a multiple year, but right now, it's very important, I, to, at least in January, um, have parents have a very good idea as to when school will start mm -hmm. and when school will end, because they, there's a lot of planning that goes on. And then, at this point, what we're going to be looking at are the major parts of the calendar. So we will be revisiting the calendar again. Um, later and hopefully earlier this spring when we able to identify the you know the secondary early release days and conferences and so forth but for right now what are you looking at what is remaining the same for next year is that school will start on the Tuesday after Labor Day mm -hmm. and you can see what the um, holidays and the no school days are um, that are the, the holidays being state or federal holidays, mm -hmm. and then where there have been uh, some no school days, such as the one that's in September, mm -hmm. and um, there is one again later on in, um, in March. And, uh, the and November. last day of school, pardon? In November, the teachers. Yes, yeah. and then we're, well, I want to, I was going to come back to that in one second. Okay. <laughs> but let me, since you brought it up, let me bring that up. If you notice, we put the uh, teacher professional day, actually it's all staff professional day, on Wednesday, November 1st. Earlier this year, I received a petition from the fifth That's grade. Better. It was actually a petition sent to me about, That's I don't know, committee. four days before oh, right. Halloween, asking if we could... Ah. changed the <laughs> professional day to the day after Halloween and had very in, and very interesting perspectives. The <laughs> teachers would be happier. We're a little crazy <laughs> with the, the sugar. We're tired the next day, all of that. <laughs> and so there wasn't anything that could be done at that point. We Once you set the calendar, I explained that to them, the calendar is set. But I said that we would definitely take that into consideration next year. 
Next year is a year that we can do that. No elections. Every no elections. So when we have major elections, which we would consider major state elections and federal elections, um, the I have mm -hmm. I've had an agreement for a number of years now with the uh, town hall that we do not have school. It's just it's too many people to manage on site. Mm -hmm. um, on the off years, we have a, we, and we've done this before. We've had professional day at the day after Halloween, and I would. Strongly to support this mm -hmm. proposal. So Did you tell them that? Have you communicated I, to the fifth graders? I told them that I was going to make this recommendation, okay. and if we vote this, yeah. I will let them yeah, know we should that let this them happened. Know. Yeah, if that's, if that's our decision, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, another, uh, well, let me go back to the last day of school. The last day of, sc of school, I should say another way of saying that, is the 180th day of school. Mm -hmm. On our calendar, we are obliged by state regulations to actually have five snow days built into the calendar. So technically, for the purpose of planning, the last day of school is June 25th. Mm -hmm. In fact, it could even be later than that, depending on how many snow days we have. Fortunately, in the last decade, I think we've had only one year that we've come to five. So there's a pretty good chance that we, that we will not. And next, so, but, the, but in terms of planning, what that means is that parents and teachers need That's to be conscious day. of the That's 25th the when they're, they're setting up oh, well, summer so jobs or camps mm -hmm. or whatever. Unfortunately, that means that you're rolling around a weekend mm -hmm. and it's a, the, 20, the 25th is a Monday. So can the I have a question about Monday. the EA? The early all. Early release all. That's only if that's the last day, right? So if yes. yes. So if mm -hmm. the 18th turns out not to be the last day, we don't. That have will not be an early release. Yeah. So I'm not sure we should put it on the calendar that way because it looks like mm. it's a. I know. A permanent. Mm -hmm. It looks like that is you know no matter what happens you know even if we finish on the 25th we're having an early release on the 18th. You can have an early release day. Are the teachers working the rest of the day? No. Yeah, technically, I mean, yeah. Thank a lot you. of them Thank are working. You've you answered my question. Okay. They're, they're having getting grades in. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like that's confusing for parents to read that <coughs> as a permanent well, part yeah. of the calendar. Let me that see it what we be. did last. Um, I don't remember that last year, but I'm not sure. All right, let me see how we can fix that, that piece of it. I mean, because you'd have this little note saying last day of school is dis mm -hmm. 11.30, dismissal, that sort of. We could do that. Available, that information is available to them. Uh, so I know you're not done to say, but Mr. Hainer, do you have okay. something quick? Real quick. Okay. I, I know, I'm assuming it, it, we have an early release day on the very first day of school. Yes. Is, is that something? Uh, For elementary school. I understand. Is that something that we can, it, I can't it's imagine coming in for, well. I don't know. It's a nice way to start. Well, it's a good way we to start. did when we were in negotiations about this, we talked about that issue and we decided that for consistency, it's just better to just keep it regardless, just keep it early release. So, so then why is there not an early release on April 24th? Uh, well, there should be. Mm -hmm. that's okay. just a mistake. So that's a, that's a mistake. We'll have okay, to get that good. one. Okay. <laughs> Because I was going to say, if you were going to take one off, you might want to make it the first day of school. But yeah. <laughs> and I can see that we don't have them. You know, the, yeah. the whole issue of bolding here. So this. Yeah, is, yeah. There's some bolding <laughs> issues. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So we'll figure that. Fix that. All right. Now another piece here, and this is some discussion. It involves the day before the uh, the winter the uh, not the winter break but the holiday break, which is Friday the twenty second. One of the things that we saw this year on Friday is enormous absences. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that this wouldn't, this would, this would um, make a difference, but in fact, it may have encouraged more. It may more. encourage more because yeah. it's only a half I, day, I, right? I understand that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, Dr. Susan and I were talking before, oh, back uh, several weeks before the break thing. Well, maybe we should just change it, but. At the last minute, but I it did to make people, sense. Yeah. It, it was just too confusing. It, it, things like after school carry, you don't understand all the ripple effects that mm -hmm. involve people when you make a calendar change. So you, you need you live with what you make as your judgments at the time. But you're making this but, change. Well, this uh, 12 months early. 
if you, if right, no, you, this is not no, the I'm other. Yeah, if, you, if you made the decision, if going forward to not have that as a school day, the only issue at that point, I mean, we, we, sufficient notification to the, to the community. The only other part would be for you to uh, reschedule whatever you had planned for the teachers that afternoon. Right. Um, what? You're saying that, that there's sufficient there's time for everybody to day. understand it. The only yeah. early release day you can have and not have it and allow everybody to go home under the law is the day before Thanksgiving. Got it. Mm -hmm. The, the, mm -hmm. the DE, DESE expects the schools to be functioning for a full day, whether the kids are there or not on the early release day. So, other than that one day. Of course, this year, well, is, there's a slightly different issue. I mean, it's not quite as bad as, as the year true. we had yeah. because of where Thanksgiving. Christmas is located and for people to celebrate that. I, I'm, I'm just this year here was, based uh, on our discussion yeah. and, uh, for a discussion at the table. Got it. Okay, so you, Mr. Slickman? Yeah, Christmas was a Sunday this year. Right. And so actually Lowell was closed on Friday. A lot of schools, uh, right? So... Uh, and this time it's a Monday. A lot of folks are out on a road on Friday, uh, just in terms of going about doing what I'd normally be doing around here. The highways are packed and, and, and people were traveling. Um, I think with Christmas on a Monday, I don't think we'd see that. I don't think Lowell will end up closing on the Friday, uh, the mm -hmm. 22nd. Right. Um, right. Yeah, it is a different so thing. So I, I think the pressures to get someplace mm -hmm. are going to be a little different. Uh, in 2017 than it was last year yeah that's true yeah so I don't I don't see the you don't see that you don't see the need for this I, yeah. I liked I I think that in, in terms of the climate and the way families responded uh, in Lowell this year that, that it was a real benefit to them to have the 23rd off but I think mm -hmm. the 22nd is pushing it mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and, and to the point yeah it may encourage more right right and so i don't think this we want to do because when we have school we have the teachers go school. through their right they yeah. they would continue with their curriculum Any, uh, uh, so one other wait, thing mr cardin as a said, counterpoint yeah. I think, as a counterpoint i think part of the problem is when you have a full week before that vacation so mm -hmm. if, if it falls if, if if the way the holiday falls you only have four days or three days or two days uh, or then, then then there's not quite so much pressure. But when the kids are there for the full week. And they're antsy. Ex and they're antsy and they're expecting all this stuff. And it, that Friday was hard on in the elementary schools in particular. So mm. I, I actually support, and I'd, I'd like to hear what your principals say, but I, I do support making that so a half day, especially for the elementary schools, if not system wise. Okay. Hmm. okay, so two more things. Yeah. yeah One is week. kindergarten. Yeah. Um, this year, let me remind you what we did this year. Right. Um, we began, we've, we've, we've tried different, tried different ways that we do screening. And for a couple of years, we tried screening the first week of, of school. Mm -hmm. And the suggestion was that this wasn't working as well as we, we would have hoped, in part because it didn't give anybody an opportunity to um, adjust classes. Mm -hmm. So we started last year doing screening in June and um, that worked much better. However, there were, because there was a lot of students enrolling during the summer, in fact, a fair amount of kindergartens enrolling, that a number of schools were faced with a fairly large number. Most said that it worked, but nonetheless, it was a little bit of a strain. So we've had some discussion with the elementary principals as to how to, if we, if we want to change and what we've done this year. So let me remind you what happened. On Tuesday, uh, kindergarten students started school, but they had just an open house. Parents and students came. Mm. In some schools, they staggered that, so you'd have groups of 10 coming in. Other schools, they did not do it that way. That's entirely their choice. And then on the next two days, which were full days, mm. half the kindergarten came, and then the second day, the other half came, and when we got to Friday, it was a full day all. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of positives to that, except for the parents that had the first <laughs> day didn't like the gap till they went all. So that was an issue, which we've been discussing. So another idea we had, and, and I would like to say, I, I, we, want to, we thought we'd like this, but now we're rethinking it a little bit. 
that maybe the Tuesday and the Wednesdays would be half the class one day, half the class the other, combine it with an open house, but have both days or, um, a one o'clock dismissal because <coughs> Tuesday already is. But for kindergarten, having that on Wednesday so they're comparable. And then have full days Thursday, Friday. Since talking about it on Monday, there's been some conversation going on in emails that, well, <coughs> we didn't think of this, we didn't think of that. So we're going to revisit this next week with the st Kindergarten Steering Committee and the principals on the 20th so that when we, I can let you know what the recommendation is before we even come into the next meeting. But the other part is, and it actually goes to your comment about substitutes, one of the struggles we had this year, I should say in, in June, is getting adequate coverage so that the the teachers and the people supporting them, specialists, we have enough subs to cover the, the, the days that we're going to do the screening. So I'm going to come mm -hmm. up with a different model for how to do it next year, mm -hmm. this, this coming June. But for the following June 18, we want to propose uh, something to think about <coughs> of having kindergarten end a day and a half earlier than the rest of the students that they can screen and then do the screening in those two days now there's disadvantages there in terms of families and after school care and so one of the things we might do is talk to the after school as to whether they could accommodate them that's going to be sketchy I have to admit and some schools have the space to do it and right, some schools don't yeah so that so I think what we will do is come back you know with the proposal for kindergarten but the, the thing that p kindergarten parents need to know for next year is that they will be starting school that first week and what the model will be w remains uh, for uh, a later time but you'll, they'll probably know mm -hmm. the end of this month so I, I think I mean I think what what works for teachers and administrators is the right call but I think parents need to know as soon as possible no, no, I, yeah. yeah, I understand. Yeah. Now, the last thing involves all of you. Right. When Karen put this on, there's a lot of conflicts with your pattern of second and fourth <coughs> uh, uh, Thursdays for meetings. So what she did was um, basically put on what fit that pattern to second and fourth. And if it was a conflict, there's no school committee meeting. So it gives you the opportunity to decide what you want to do in the months where all these conflicts occur. Right. All right. So th that's your job tonight. <laughs> so, so basically, we are required by our bylaws to have 20 meetings a year. There's only 16 on the calendar, so we have to find a way to add four. Now we can cancel a meeting later on. We just have to put it on the calendar um, as a possibility. In my mind, I see an easy way to add two, and well, less. But adding more is not as easy. Um, yeah, Dr. Alsanampe. We could add one on December seventh, like we did this year. So double that up. Yeah. And not go into the third week, which I think is just mm -hmm. too hard. Yeah. So I, so I think we do. I mean, we need two in December because that's our budget presentations. Yeah. Um, one possibility that I was thinking is that we can do December 7th and 21st mm -hmm. rather than the 14th. I'm thinking that that last week gets more crazy because of holiday stuff. Ho because the holidays okay. are coming. And okay. So that's why I'm thinking do 7 and 14. 7 and 14. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think we absolutely need. So, um, and then, then what about November? Mm -hmm. Right. And so then. November and I think it was um, February. February still have only one uh, June has only one mm -hmm. and so we could add one in, that's another easy add to add one in June that might be canceled if, if we've decided that the business is concluded so I, I we could do I and mean, we should definitely add it in February because there's always budget stuff that we can't seem to resolve anyway yeah, so right. I mean that, that seems to be an easy it's either the first or the 15th whatever people want I would say earlier is probably so better, the first. given the yeah. Well, amount. the first we have three in a row, then. Ugh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, sitting next year for three weeks. Just pointing that out. Think about it. I think the 15th might be better for that reason. 
Okay, well, um, Mr. I, I, I would say that we should uh, do our homework and come back uh, at the next meeting. We, we've it's the first read. Well, yeah, the first read, but we're I, throwing I, out ideas right now. We're not, I we're mean, not deciding is, is it. We've also got the, in November, we, we don't hold a meeting if it conflicts with the annual MASC conference. I don't have the date for that. Right. Uh, and I just went on the website and I don't see the November date for, for that. Um, so well, in November, we could do 16 and 30. Remember that and yeah, these are placeholders, like, right? You know, so remember, all we're doing is scheduling them. Yeah, yeah, yeah these then are placeholders. When the MASC issue, uh, uh, you know, comes up, we cancel it. I think we could find. I think we could find out when that is. With, you know, just with. Right. Yeah, uh, I think November 16 but, and 30. That sounds but we, that. But we also know, have. That's the month no, we do the event, superintendent's evaluation. So yeah. We, we right. So, so we need that, two meetings. We usually. We've, we've been but able we, to streamline it in the past. The first time we did it under the new process, yeah. we gave it a whole night and did, only took half the night. I think, the, correct me if I'm wrong, the rest of you, it's only taken about a, a, an half hour. Half of a meeting, usually. Uh, so, but so, it's something to remember. So, okay, so I, I like the idea of the 16th and 30th of November. I think that's... I know I have a conflict already on the 30th. That's the okay. case conference. Okay. Um, and we know there's potentially going to be... <clears throat> right. Right. Um, we can pass the budget that night. We'll let you know. Yeah. We'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll do the evaluation that night. <laughs> uh, well, we could do 9th and 16th then for that, for November. All right. And I think an easy thing to add is the 21st of June, or do 7th and 21st. Sure. Because well, 7th and 21st, 7th and would, 21st work, yeah. would work, and it would, that, yeah, then we don't have any double up. And, um, and then if the 21st seems like, we're done. Then we're, we. Then we're done. Then we're done. Do we have a party or something? Yeah. Okay. Can, so let's. let's so September and October are as is. Mm -hmm. Yep. You're saying November the 9th and the 16th. Yep. In December. The 7th and 14th. Yep. Wait. What did we say in November? 9th and, and 16th. 16th. I'm guessing that the 9th will be the conference. Yeah. Really? So we'll have oh, to for Veterans Day. Yeah, they they no. will. No, they'll avoid it. They'll push it up for earlier. Mm. Well, let's know if they'll we'll push it come up to that when we hold on to it. Huh? I think I think well for the public. When they was don't... it this year? It was early. Yeah, yeah. it was early. Early. it was before Veterans Day. Yeah, so I'll bet it's going to be the second and third. So we can shift things around if we need to. So this is just these are placeholders, but they should be placeholders. It makes sense. Okay. So November 9th and 16th, December 7th, 7th and 14th. 14th. January is fine. Yep. And February the 15th. Yep. Add the 15th. Add the 15th. Yeah. What about doing 1st and 15th? Um, in February? Yeah. Uh, so we talked about that that would, oh, 1st and 15th would work. If it was, we were talking about 1st and 8th, that would be three meetings in a row. Yeah, what if we just <laughs> bump it? I think that would work. What do you mean, bump it? Oh, um, so change it around. So do first and fifteenth rather than. Um, so get rid of the eighth. Eighth and fifteenth. Do the first and the fifteenth. So that it's the first and the third Thursday instead of the second and the fourth. Uh -huh. It sort of feels like it'd be easier if it was in general the first and the third. I know, right? Right, and then that would be less problematic for us. In the it future. seems like all of those but would work. But that's send that to policy. <laughs> We can change the policy. To look at the, the school vacation is always the yeah. third week of the oh, that's why. whole week, yeah. and that's why. Yeah. What or if it, it doesn't work that way. Right. If policy had it as 19, it would be easier. No. If, if we need to, you can suspend a policy. You yeah. don't necessarily have to change a policy for one year. For, for no, no, no I, I know, I know, I know. I mean, we can, and, uh, yeah, these right. are things that have to be on the I, calendar. I not schedule the 20 and then yeah. Yeah. cancel them yeah. if right. you have to. And then in when June. When I first came on board, there was a scheduled uh, June meeting, uh, two June meetings every year, and yeah. I think we only had one year. I don't even think we had that, that year. Yeah, right, so in June we're having the 7th and the 21st. Same yeah. So also moving those to also the 1st Also moving that instead of the 14th. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. And so that should get us to 20, and uh, we should all look at it and yep. see if there's any other conflicts on second read. We'll have, maybe we'll move things out around again, but we'll just sort of throw that as a proposal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so when we get to second read, what else do we get? Do we start getting conferences dates at that point, or no, not yet? Take a longer, okay. um, I, 
Well, no, I don't think we'll have the. I don't think we'll have the early. Well, we'll try on that the early release date. That may be a little soon, but maybe we can well, try for I'm April, sorry. March, or April this year to get, get that. The, okay. the next My, piece of it yeah. done. And I urge communication that um, to ask principals to schedule things that don't conflict with school committee nights, yes. if at all possible. Yes. Um, the truth of the matter is it's not sometimes the principals. Yep. It's, you know, it's music or it's, you know, because they just schedule right. the concerts. That happens as well. But right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But they, they have to go through been, the building. Don't they have to go through the building principal to schedule the somebody night? Somebody must schedule. Mm -hmm. I mean, but this is the schedule. I mean, this year I missed both the middle school and the high we'll, school, we'll, you know. We'll put, we'll put it out. Sort of curriculum give nights. It give it a So, hug. yeah, it'd be nice to meet the teachers. Yeah. Right. This is why it'll take a lot of time to figure out conference nights. Once we get the, we get the structure in here, then we can yep. start putting all that in. Okay. So we're going to do next read the next meeting. Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Right. Um, okay. So we are about an hour off. <laughs> well, yeah. So let's. Um, so next on the agenda is um, discussion of the job description for the chief financial director. Um, as was sort of hinted at tonight, uh, Ms. Johnson is leaving us for another position, um, I think February 10th. That's is her the last day. It's yes. her last day, mm -hmm. so we are um, searching for a uh, replacement. And um, we wanted to talk in the full school committee meeting um, about the description that was written uh, um, and, and sort of tweak it or, or have just a discussion about it. Right. Uh, so let me open that up to people who want to, Mr. Hainer. Uh, the description that we got a copy of ended up having my edits on it. So yeah, yeah, right, I just right. want to let you know I that like first. That. Yeah. I, I, so right, and you I'll, had some I'll small start edits that were. I'll start it. Uh, Makes sense, but yeah. down under necessary knowledge, skills, and abilities, I just suggested. Uh, in fact, I think it just said. It says be nice to everybody is what it was going to, and <laughs> it left out uh, the administrators, the school administration. And so I suggested add school committee members or a statement just regarding. Every. administration just to go yeah. along uh, friendly thing and then down further uh, under uh, essential duties and responsibilities the uh, on the second page prepare monthly financial reports for school committees that was left out uh, it just had principals and department heads mm -hmm. and, um, and <clears throat> down further uh, it talked about uh, the budget presentations um, it said bi-monthly, and I, does that mean once every two months, or does that mean every two weeks? I have no problem changing. I just wanted it more clear. That's all. Bi-monthly is uh, just got, every two uh, weeks. Two meetings a month. Well, I mean, I have no. Or all regular. You could just say it's regular school committee meetings. Yeah, just, you don't have yeah, to be. Yeah, that, that all just, regularly it, it, scheduled Grammatically, it may be two meetings a month, no, but it, it lends okay. itself to misconfusion. A little bit further down, it talked about. Um, and other committees as needed. I just want to know who determines that needed. As a former president of a union, I, when it said as needed, I always said it was the teacher's need, not the administration's need. So just a little clarification there. And that's the only things that I wanted things on. Mr. Slickman. Yeah, the other thing that I saw, and I pass this by our uh, uh, CFO and Lowell, uh, the uh, Massachusetts Association of Public Purchasing Officials certification is something you can only get as an incumbent so that we should have it uh, eligible for or make it preferred to have it a requirement. As an incumbent, meaning you've already been a, a financial officer? You have officer. to be in, oh, okay. the, so, in the job in order to get that. Okay. So, so that you can like get that when you're in the job yep. and it's not a not that difficult to mm -hmm. do, but you can't get it until you're an incumbent. You can't do that previous to taking a job. Mm -hmm. So uh, to have so that just, is eligible for or... That re restricts our yeah, field. Yeah, it would restrict the... We could potentially screen out people yeah. who we'd like to hire. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Ms. Starks. Um, I think I'm not really sure how to do it, but uh, one of the things I know that was a uh, sticking point uh, with Ms. Johnson, I want to be very clear about how many evening meetings every week, every month, 
we expect this person to go to. I do not think as needed is clear <clears throat> enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that we need to, you know, there's going to be two school committee meetings a month that you're going to have to go to. You have to attend long range planning. You have to attend all school building meetings. You have to, and really spell out exactly what that is because I don't think or give a range expected range maybe. exactly think, you know, you know well, it, uh, but something that we're gonna yeah. Yeah. hold to because I feel like that is one thing that is not very clear in here mm -hmm. there's a lot of as needed and I'm like uh, but we required her to go to all of those and mm -hmm. that was a lot of meetings and we need to be clear actually I, I have I sort of in a way had an opposite reaction to this so so like, what is our goal? Our goal is to accurately convey the job and get the best possible person we can get. And I worry that having such an incredibly detailed job description could scare somebody off. And, I, and I'd want to make sure that this job description is sort of in line with what other districts are doing. That I think it, it, I just worry that it raises red flags if you have a job description that's so much more detailed than other districts are doing. And, and so, I, and I don't know the answer to that, but this, I, this has to be. De I would hope that in the contract that we have, that it references this job description. But the, and if you don't it have that clarity in it, and I don't, I, I think this. I don't see this as being a. I, I defer well, to that's, Rob that's on this. I'd want to, I'd want to know what other not, districts are doing. Not a, mm. All our job descriptions, right down to our uh, administrative uh, clerks. Uh, our details on what their education, what their skill level is coming in, what their expectation in the job is. Uh, and usually at the very end, and it says all other things that the superintendent wants. Right, I mean, and we also want to build in some flexibility so that if things but, shift around a but little that bit. Forms, that yeah. the, the top administrator, the superintendent, if the, you have all the detail that, that Ms. Stocks just asked, the superintendent has the discretion to, at, at times to say, it's going to be a meeting that you don't need to come to tonight and you can pass on it but if right. it's clearly out there the person has the expectation that they may be asked to come on this basis there's no problems right okay right. dr alice nampy um can you mr spiegel explain what this job description will be used for is it the basis of the contract or is it posted in the thing or is it supplied to the candidate as they request it it's I don't. It would be in the posting, okay. so it would. I would po Usually, our job descriptions are posted either on School Spring or the other places where we would advertise this position. We would advertise a little more broadly in um, the Mass Municipal Association, MASBO, some other organizations um, to broaden the search to people who are looking specifically for financial and municipal government jobs. Um, in addition to just people who school spring is really target school jobs we will post there but we'll also post on the other places so we usually post this as the job description that is posted it could be referenced in the contract as well it can be something that is obviously once they're the person if we are successful in hire hiring someone they have a copy of their job description um, so that's for all of those purposes yes do do we have to post this for the job, I mean, I'm, I know we have to explain to the person what the requirements are, but does that have to be in the ad? Right, as opposed to the contract, for example. Right, yeah. It, it, I'm, yeah. I'm just, isn't yeah, there, you know, It do depends we, on, I mean, some ads have, sometimes it has to be condensed depending on some of the space restrictions or line yeah. restrictions in some places. I mean, in school spring, I could post this whole thing. Uh -huh. um, and it could be this whole mm -hmm. copy and paste this whole job description into the school spring posting and they can see the whole thing I mean in other places you can attach it I mean so it really just depends on if there are space limitations but typically I do um, post the job description um, if, yeah, if I may it really depends. In, the, in the current contract uh, approved by our attorney it says under duties the chief financial officer's duties are fully fully described in the job description in Appendix A attached to and incorporated by reference into this agreement. Okay. This is only one model, right? But this, please, this is a standard boilerplate contract approved by our attorney, worked on very hard by Liz Valario. All I'm saying is that she is the one who, who agree, uh, did this, and she is the one that supported the 
Okay. I don't want to belate. Mr. Schliffman. Yeah, I, you know, the thing is, is that in, in looking at job descriptions uh, in, in school departments, some are very detailed and some are not. Yeah. And I think that's more a matter of institution and style than it is of, uh, of having any consequence in people applying for job, with the exception of uh, if you're listing job requirement, you know, the qualifications that, that are required that you right. can't fulfill. So that if you see a bunch of must have this, must do that, and, and you, you're missing one of those, people will mm -hmm. drop out. The, uh, but uh, I, I don't think most people would be scared off by a more detailed description. It's just uh, an element of district style. Uh, we've been served well by doing this, except that um, I, I think the points of uh, calling out and being specific about the uh, culture of the community and the number of uh, night meetings we require because of the high level of citizen participation uh, it is an important signal to place there so that somebody doesn't come to us six months later and say, gee, I didn't know that I'd have to go to all these meetings. Uh, other than that, most of the stuff in here is pretty typical school business manager type okay. stuff, and nobody should be surprised. Okay. Mr. Steelman. Oh, sorry. Yes. No, Did you want to respond? Say, I can, um, if you'd like, I mean, before, once you put in all of your inputs and suggestions for changes. I can send this to Liz for her review to make sure that um, she's okay with it and would say that's fine to post as is and it's um, reasonable that it would be attached to a contract that would ultimately be entered into, um, which is what it, you said, Bill, uh, Mr. Hainer, that it is right. Mm -hmm. so. it's, currently, it, yeah. it's in yeah. the document that she mm -hmm. created in you know, the last round of negotiation with our current CFO. Sure. I would just hope that we'd be able to do this quickly because I think we need to get this yeah. on the we street as soon as possible. Oh, wait, Mr. Stanley. Time is the essence. So a couple things. Could you, I mean, I, Paul made a, a point about the Master's Association of Public Purchasing Officials. Could you check, the, do you have to be a, a CFO to get that? Because I know there are people in the Boston, you, you, no. Yeah, no, okay, but they have to be. An incumbent. An incumbent, meaning they have to be in a, in a public school district uh, yeah, as it, a, in a business who, office. That would be doing that kind of work. So yeah. that you could train for the <clears throat> position and get your yeah. credentials, your, your, your yeah. licensure. Um, okay. And, and have everything all, all set to go, but you can't get that till you get the job. All right, got it. So, uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll change that to eligible. Eligible. For, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the next point I want to make is this, and it, it, so I, this has been said, but I, I just want to say it again. It is important to be as specific as possible in here about the number of uh, night meetings. So <clears throat> when um, you know, in different organizations and you hire people, sometimes you're very specific. 50% of your time is going to be traveling. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just best to stay up front. 50% of the time you're going to be traveling to out of state by plane. And you tell applicants that and they know it and they either buy it, they're into it or they're not. And some, you know, in the organization I had, I, you know, I tell them you're, you're going to be traveling to Manchester, Lowell, Boston, and Lynn. And, um, you know, I actually have them actually do that and experience going to those offices. They're finalists for a, a major job because I want them to, because they can't, if it's not, they're not going to be into it and it's going to be too much. We just need to know that right away so we don't waste each other's time. So I think the more specific you are about the number of meetings, and I would get the number from Diane, I'd put it in there. <clears throat> Generally speaking, you know, typically uh, during, the, during the school year from September to June, uh, the expectation is that you're going to have X number of night meetings per, per month whatever that number is. And it's right up front. It's right there in the, the, the job description. The applicants know it, and they apply or not based on that reality and their own personal situation. Mr. Carton. Uh, so I want to ask, just, or just raise a sort of a broader issue. And you know, every time we have a high-level position turnover, I think we should take a look at, do we really want to keep things exactly as they are, or is there mm -hmm. perhaps some other model or type of person that we're looking for uh, in light of this opening. So, you know, the one thing that I know that Dr. Bodhi has been burdened by, uh, as I've watched her sort of administrative duties and, and her educational leadership, I think, has suffered to some extent because there is nobody else to take off some of the administrative duties. So I do, do wonder, you know, certainly the other model that you see is a chief administrative officer that is also the chief budget officer. 
Um, so I just hope, you know, we don't have much time, but I just wanted to know if you've given any consideration into at least highlighting some or give some other administrative duties that this person could have in addition to just running the business office. The answer is yes. I've actually spent a lot of time thinking about this. In fact, I've also done surveys of all of our lab partners to see what their business offices look like. And the one thing I can say is that they're all different. And so then try to look at functionality. Because one of the things that we questioned was whether we would go forward and hire the accountant position. That position has always been in the district. Um, it's had different people over time, and it's been called different things. But essentially, that is the role. Um, but given Ms. Johnson's departure and that this <coughs> job will be posted for June, for July 1 or sooner, um, having that per person in, the, in position is going to be important. But I, I totally agree with you. What, what can we do? Um, for example, I mean, certainly there's issues around um, project management as we go forward. And I think that's something that the town manager and I have talked about as well. Because there are levels of project management. And we are in a great shape in terms of having all these projects, but mm -hmm. they have taken, they take a lot of time. And so, yes. But the, the thing about the permanent town building is that that is suggested and maybe to your point, we may, may maybe be a little bit more ex explicit about building projects uh, for sure. And in fact, one of the reasons why we put, this wasn't in the original job description of the MAPO, is that the person, one person who sits on the high school building committee has to have that certification. And there are three people in this town that have it. So. And, uh, the, town, the CFO is one of them. So that, that's an issue that we have to cover. Ms. Starks. Um, I notice there's nothing in here that says that uh, they will um, help with uh, negotiations. Um, and I think mm -hmm. that they, she plays a vital, they play a vital role in that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually uh, looking at the uh, Lawrence uh, Public Schools uh, CFO. Um, and theirs is at least a page longer than ours. Okay. So okay. Um, they are very detailed about um, what they are supposed to do. Some other towns I look at and they're um, more general, um, but um, this one in particular has a lot of very specific um, pieces. Um, but some of them are like, you know, we'll make sure that technology is used in their department to increase productivity and, you know, be the leader of that for their, you know, I mean, we don't have stuff like yeah. that. So I don't know. I mean, I, I agree with Mr. Cardin that this is the time. I know we feel like we don't have the time to do this, but if we don't do it now and really yeah. fill this out with what we really expect this person to do, I think we end up not being well, clear in what in what, what what the job really entails. <coughs> well, I mean, you also have the possibility of something changing later if, if we think that the candidate has the right qualifications and the right, you know, I mean, it, it could be that the position evolves. Yeah. There is a line in there on providing management support in the areas of human resources and contract negotiations. Okay. I don't know if that you yeah. want that more explicit. No. The other thing, and I just want to respond <coughs> a little bit to Mr. Cardin's point. Um, I also looked a lot at titles, that, and, and to Dr. Bodie's point, offices are all different, titles are all different. Mm -hmm. CFO is a title that's referenced in a lot of our policies mm -hmm. because it's been a long-term title here. It's a different <laughs> title in other districts where they have director of financial operations or di director of financial <laughs> services, or in some districts they're assistant superintendents for finance. Um, so it's all different, I think, right. because of the way it's referenced in our policies and our history, keeping it as chief financial officer, and I put in parentheses, school business administrator, because I just want people to know that's the license we're looking for. That's mm. the, the, you know, they have to have that to do this job. Mm -hmm. Can make another yeah. point? Yeah, Dr. Reddy. We, we, um, we have spent actually a fair amount of time looking at job descriptions. And one of the things that 
was clear <coughs> in this survey of, of, of certainly our, um, our colleagues is that the, our position is unique in some respects in that we now have a town facilities department. Mm -hmm. In some districts, they oversee all facilities. Mm -hmm. In some districts, they oversee payroll. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. We have a town school payroll system. So it's the, the scope is different, really. And, but I do think having um, some language in there, I should probably go back <laughs> and double check, it, to covering the clarity, even though they're not gonna be um, taking the role of a director of facilities, there still has to be a strong facilities involvement mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in this. Right. But even, I think that that exactly is why it all has to be spelled out, because mm -hmm. every single one of these is different. And so people have to read this and understand the uniqueness of this uniqueness. Yeah. Right. And you know, I mean, you know, it can't. I know we don't want we don't put in there what they don't have to do. That's <coughs> something that has to come out in the you know interviewing process. But you know, I think it's very important then that this is as specific as possible yeah. so people understand. Right. The, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Hainer. the the piece that you were just talking to, uh, Dr. Bodhi. Uh, the attendance of the uh, at the permanent town building committee may be met by that if it's a, goes all the time. In other words, not just when there's school related projects there. So they'd be aware of all the facilities and the ramifications of that throughout the town. I don't know that that's a that part. I think when it says permanent town building committee should belong to your purview of when it, when it, when they don't do or don't come. Mm -hmm. The other thing I'd just like to say. I don't know how effectively, but we did survive as a school department for 60 days without Ms. Johnson. So, I mean, you know better how the bumps and grinds that went with that, that aspect of it. But to go to the idea of rushing into this, uh, I, th I think it's important we take sufficient time to make it clear so we can avoid the bumps that we had over the past year, year and a half. That's, that's all. Mr. Slickman. I mean, we can, if, I, I would favor putting something out quickly. Yeah. Uh, to bring in candidates. If we start looking, and, and the, the candidates we get will inform whether we've written the job description correctly or not. I don't think that we should be spending a lot of time right now trying to tweak it without the benefit of the data of the candidates that would respond to the search. And if we're getting somebody who's highly qualified and can step in and do a great job for us based on this job description, it, we had a winning job description. But if we think that we want to uh, throw uh, to open the pool again and see if we could get a different candidate, that then we get in our first line of responses. Then we go back and, and take a hard look at what was uh, blocking us from getting the people we wanted in the first round. So um, mm -hmm. we can always pull. We can always stop the search. We can always pull the the, the posting. We could always repost. But I don't think that we should take a lot of time going around in circles and trying to edit it um, at this point. Um, I, I, I want to see who's out there. And, I want, I, I, and the longer we wait, the greater the chance that somebody we like is going to go take a job in another district. OK. Um, the conversation going on for like the, uh, Dr. Osnape. Um we can always update, right? As long as yes. it's before they sign it and yep. they see yep. it and they agree. We're not. Yep. There's yeah. no. Update it on school spring once it's posted. Yeah. We yeah, but I mean, even pace. even when we're starting to talk to them, we can say we've gone over this and we realize there's this a needs slightly to different change. Yep. Here's, yeah. Here it is, and neither say. Yep. Okay. All right, Mr. Hanner, quick. I would, uh, if a motion is appropriate, uh, move that we go forward, asking uh, Mr. Spiegel to take the. Uh, the minor edits that we put in tonight mm -hmm. and uh, uh, present it to uh, Liz, mm -hmm. Lario Council, and mm -hmm. if it's appropriate, put that document go forward or bring it back to us at the next meeting, either way. Okay. Do we feel we need a motion on this? Is that I just said one question for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. I'm yeah. going to vote yes on this. Does this make sense to put a motion in? Kathy, you want to say something? Yeah. I, I, just as a point of clarification, I think the motion needs to be specific, I think the motion would be to authorize the, uh, the uh, 
Human resources. Authorize the superintendent, because she's, mm -hmm. she's the person responsible for everything anyway. Authorize the superintendent, uh, superintendent to make revisions based on this conversation, review the document with, uh, with uh, council. council, and upon approval of council, advertise the position. That would be the motion. I'd second. Okay. Okay. Did you want to say it? I, I agree with that. One okay. of our uh, one of our hurries on that is we do know there's some other searches yeah, going on. Yeah. Right. Want to get out there quickly. Okay, okay. So motion on the table um, made by Mr. Schlickman. Yes. Seconded by Mr. Hainer. Um, all in favor of the motion on the table? Aye. 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 Five say aye. Aye. Uh, opposition is unanimous. I just had one question. Have you, have you been kind of recruiting candidates? I mean, this has been coming for some time. So have you been putting the word out? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, that's uh, good. Always. <laughs> okay, good. I mean, I, 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 wanted, I just wanted to hear that. I, I assume you were, but I wanted to but hear that. But okay. on the other hand, I know the market. I to do that with an interim, and there's, it's, there's I, not many people. Yeah. Yeah. If there are any potential CFOs out there watching this, um, <laughs> the this answer, is a one, the wonderful is place yes. to it's work. A wonderful place to work. Got some great yes. uh, school committee <laughs> members here who will support your work and efforts. Yeah, the, but the one thing that is different here is the number of night meetings. I will say that um, while some job descriptions are much more robust in terms of facilities payroll, but when I talk about night meetings, hardly any. Right. Other than maybe right. school committee. Right. And that's and an that's issue. That's a big difference. And yes. in cities, the people coming from cities, even more so. Mm. Right. So they need to understand. Right. Yes, it's, right. a different, it's a different kind of job. Than, mm. And so that's it's, it it's so important. We have the benefits mm -hmm. of the facilities and the payroll that they don't have to deal with, but we have the mm -hmm. other thing, which is that there's a lot of night meetings. Mm -hmm. I'd venture to guess that in the cities they have assistants that go to those meetings and in the smaller communities they may even have other staff that they do it too. They may have fewer meetings. It okay. won't be in the top person's the job. Yeah, there's, the no, there's no time meeting. Uh, All right, yeah. so uh, we are now more than an done. hour over, so let's uh, move on to superintendent's report. Should we move the 10 o'clock move? No. Uh, not yet. Yeah. I think we can get it. I, I, 9.15. I think we can get it, but let's. <laughs> Just saying that too. Well. Get Cindy mad. The first thing. <laughs> Let me give you a quick <laughs> overview of where oh, we're yeah. going with some of these, uh, the, the building projects. Um, starting with Stratton, okay. uh, things are going well. We're staying to the timeline. Um, nobody sees any, any issues there, and in fact, there will be some, um, a fair amount of contingency money that will probably not need to be used because we're beyond the point of some of the big surprises. Yeah. So we're, we're in good shape there. Okay. Um, Does that mean less money that the taxpayers have to fork over in the end? Is that no, don't go there yet. I'm just, I'm just, is that what that means? I mean, I mean so the, um, but the answer is yes and no. Because <clears throat> okay. keep in mind, we have other projects going on simultaneously yeah, that yeah. are not <laughs> being handled by MSBA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a, yeah. Okay. okay. So one of them is Thompson and. Um, there's a, there is a little worry on the timeline at Thompson. I have to be honest on that. Um, yeah. But things are moving along. There were, a, there were some permitting issues in the beginning, and then there were some drainage issues uh, that had to be um, remedied. But uh, I went over and actually personally met with the, um, owner, our owner's project manager to go over all of the uh, schematics. And, um, I think that we're going to be seeing steel going up sometime in early February, and hopefully we don't have 36 inches of snow while we're, that's while that's going. But I, but the they do have a plan. I've talked with the architect also that they feel confident that the plan still has us opening with no problems in September. Okay. Cool. That's two. That's two. Okay. Gibbs. Gibbs, um, Gibbs, Gibbs is going along uh, well. It, it, though I have to say, it took longer to figure out some of the floor plans because the building, while well, it's going to be adequate, more than, it's going to be adequate. It still is constrained in terms of getting all of our programs in the building because there are special education programs. There, you, 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 you're aware of all of the curriculum 
kinds of programs we have at the middle school. Um, and of course, we're, we're, we're definitely dedicated to our music, our art, and, and so there's a lot, ELL. And so it took a little bit longer than we anticipated figuring out floor plans. I would have loved to have been able to have you have uh, the presentation tonight, but, we're, but I don't have the presentation yet. But as soon as I get it, I'll give it to you. I mean, certainly ahead of when we are going to um, go out for some, some further comment. And I would hope that you would give some comments on this. I will tell you, though, that a lot of thought has gone into it. It has involved everybody here um, and also curriculum leaders making sure that all their needs were adequately met. So, and the public meeting is? The public meeting is going to be this coming Tuesday. Um, the this week was picked because it worked and it also is a permanent town building and it works to have all of them on the same day. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to have over at Audison in the afternoon at 3.30, we're going to have a, a voluntary meeting of teachers who would like to come and see the plans, um, ask questions, give comments. The same thing for parents starting at 6 o'clock. And then we've been, we're going to be a little bit later on the agenda for permanent town building, and so we'll then be going to permanent town building. So we want to, if there's any comments or things that need to be uh, tweaked, this is the time to do it because the plans really do need to be finalized by the end of January. So this is thir uh, Tuesday, January 17th at January 6 o'clock at 6 o'clock at Audison. So at 6 o'clock, I sent out a, a notice to parents um, and I will remind parents on Monday, mm -hmm. and then uh, hopefully people will be able to come. But the thing I also said is that if you can't <coughs> come, and it's understandable, it's not obviously the most ideal time, um, but 7 o'clock is not necessarily ideal for families either. There's, there's pros and cons to any kind of evening time. All of these documents are going to be on the website, mm -hmm. and I included... Um, the URL for that. Already there are a number of documents up there that people can take a look at. So that's happening. Also selected um, the advisory committee. Um, there was actually a fair amount of interest in this, as you probably could imagine. So actually, I'm sort of taking a risky, a risky move in what I decided to do is to have a representative from each school. Mm. Okay. But when we bring in teachers, it's a fairly large committee. So I talked to the architect about it the other day. and So a community representative from each school? Yes, okay. elementary school. And is yes. that chosen by town council or by each school is doing their own? Thing? No, I had, I, I, I had already put in motion I had them. And I looked at people's what, mm. what, different things that they brought to the table. It's, I will be the first to admit that I, there's probably not an applicant that that sent their um, interest, their expression of interest, that would not have been a great mm -hmm. member. Have they been notified yet? Yes, they have been notified. And in fact, in a couple of cases, I've asked them if they would, if we had a subcommittee and their expertise, would they be willing uh, to serve? If we could have had the whole, you know, a much, much larger, but it, it gets a certain sense of workability. Plus, we have teachers too. We don't want to have this totally unbalanced either. In t you know, and we've talked a little bit about this as well. But there are a lot of things that will be, the, the one advantage of having more parents on this is as the teachers are going to be going into planning sessions and there's gonna be a lot of issues that we need to think about. Um, you know, a recess for example is, it, is one example. And then there's also the playground and the gardens and, and, all, of, and all of that. I mean, the, there's a quite a, a, a good list, but there will be some, um, it'll be nice to have a touchstone of parents who we can run some ideas off of too, which is exactly what the point of the advisory committee is, to uh, present um, some, give us some feedback. So that is going forward. It is not gonna be a regular meeting. It's really as needed because there's, you know, there's maybe concentrated in a, one period of time and then there might be a, a big lull. So it really mm -hmm. depends on where the architects are in the process as to how often this committee will meet. But that's already in motion. 
So I think we're in a good place there, and there's a lot of cost estimates going on. Hardy. Wait. Mm. Yes, uh, start. I'm still, I'm quite upset that we are not getting to see those before everyone else. Like, that we have been left off, that you're meeting with teachers, you're meeting with parents, and no school committee. We didn't get it tonight. We don't get it. Uh, we're presentation. ready for tonight. I know, but it, then, then the whole thing should have been pushed off. It's really embarrassing when things happen in the schools and we're not the first to know. Because we're the first people that other people call mm -hmm. to complain, to ask. And when we're not the first people to get mm -hmm. stuff, it looks really bad. When I have to pick up the phone and go, you know, I don't know. I don't have any information on that. I, I, I hear what you're saying, and I will get, as soon as I had the presentation, you, I will send it to you. I just don't have it yet. Okay. I, I, the, the thing is, it's, it's, the, it's the time frame of trying to stay aligned to making sure everything is going. I've been told that they have to finish, the, finish this by the end of January. I think originally this would have worked out a little better if we didn't have to have the amount of time that was spent in December sort of going over every square foot of the, of the building. Um, so this so. is going to be on the agenda for our, me our yes. next meeting in January. Yes, right? it can so be. So that we can at least officially give some feedback <clears throat> and hear this, what, yep. okay. what happened. Yeah. Um, and so, and the expectation is that we will get the documents before this public meeting on Tuesday. I will get, try to get those documents to you. I will make. I will contact our architect about that. I think that um, there's going to be a lot of input needed from the school committee as we go forward um, in a number of areas. I'm not sure that getting into the weeds of square footage for a particular room is. You know, you want to know what it's going to look like, but I'm not sure that, that that's the kind of input you need to give. But once we get the floor plans done, then there's going to be a whole lot of other things as we go forward. I mean, there's going to be the whole issue of buses, for example. I mean, that's just one of many. Um, and, you know, another issue that we have to really look at is do we need to keep, you know, and we're certainly happy to have your input into this too, do we need to have the middle school, the, the, the sixth grade schedule lockstep with a schedule toward the eighth, seventh, and eighth? On the other hand, it can help with split personnel, but on the other hand, the whole idea was to be able to think out of the box mm -hmm. a little bit more right. about what the sixth grade experience could be. Um, so I think we're going to have to have more to ex more discussion about that. That is that there's a lot there's a lot that yeah. has. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> he's wrestling um, with the package. But in terms of the square footage piece, yeah, yeah. I think the biggest issue. Um, Actually, I'm not sure. It's because some of the stuff will still need to be decided later. Right now, it's just like they have to be able to get the construction drawings done. Right. That's what it's all about. That's what this push is about. I think one of the biggest issues, but it can't. But it, the the forums sort of shifted the thinking on where the the main entrance was going to be to the the school. Mm -hmm. Okay. One of the things that came out in the forums particularly the parent ones, is, you know, you want to have something that's open and inviting mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, warm, tells you who the, who the school is. Well, if you have the tough street side, mm -hmm. that's not going to happen. It's very right. cramped, narrow. So the it. decision was made to shift it out to the, on the, on the, uh, the Foster Street side. So that's where it's going to be. Now this... There's, there's still a lot to be thought of, but they just have to get these construction drawings because then you got to be able to go out to bid. So we're just trying to stick to this very tight time scale, timeline, I should say. Can you speak to the timeline for the um, principal search at Gibbs? Well, um, as I've said before, I would like to I would like to see someone that was internal for a number of reasons. Um, one is that we'd love to have that person part of the planning process, and that's an important one. But honestly, another one, which I think is even maybe even more important, and that is when you hire a, a new principal. The first year, there's a lot of mentoring and um, and and time for a person to sort of get an entry plan you know, get to know the teachers. And 
I think that because this experiment that we're doing, and I think it's a very good one, I think we need to have someone there that that stuff's behind them. Mm -hmm. It could be any one, any, a lot of our administrators, it could be assistant principals, principals, um, even some curriculum leaders perhaps. That that, that that piece is behind, that the mentoring is actually before the year starts, not during the year. Because I really think it's going to be important to have someone that's so focused on all the unique issues of a starting a brand new school with a, with a, that we're trying to create. So that's actually the main reason. Uh, and then there's also the whole financial piece. I mean, we, you, you can't hire a person a year out from given our financial situation. I mean, that's just not even in the realm of possibilities. <laughs> so, but at any rate, the need, the, the curriculum work, we haven't even done the grant yet, so I, there's a little bit less pressure to get moving on that right this minute, because as you know, we've got to do the CFO. Right. And we have to do, we have to get started with the Addison. That needs to get going. And um, the plan was really to get out there, and, and actually there's only so much bandwidth. To do, do so, all this, to so, do all this. Mm -hmm. So that's a reason for the internal search, but also do you know what the current timing thought process is for doing that search? Um, this spring, either in the early part of the spring because we'd love to have the person available for the kind of work that we're anticipating doing during the summer. So we, we hopefully should know who this person is. This year, oh this yes. This year in June. It's just yeah. that right now I think it's more important to get the CFO going yeah. and it's also the, the Addison search. Yeah. So I, I actually just want to speak with, I've gotten a couple of responses from the community saying that, that if we do not do an external search, we are l potentially losing an opportunity to increase our diversity of our staff. And I, um, I want to push back against that assumption. I think that um, we are going to be doing several searches. We're doing mm -hmm. a CFO search. We'll be doing an Audison search. Um, if we hire internally, we'll be doing a search to replace that person. Yes. And that those are all great opportunities to look far and wide as best as we can for as diverse, you know, to increase diversity, which is a goal of the school committee. Um, it's a goal of the administration. Um, and that, that focusing so laser-like on one particular position is sort of that misses the big picture of what we're looking to do as a district where we are looking to make additional hires and we have opportunities to make diverse hires if possible. I also encourage anyone, if you know of people, <laughs> um, because oftentimes people are attracted to the district through personal connections, um, you know, please uh, spread the word. We are a great district to work for and, um, and we, are, we value a diverse um, uh, mm -hmm. staff. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Bodie, uh, regarding Gibbs and uh, internal, do, do we have, do we, we're aware, we have available to us all the people that are uh, certified for that position, don't we? You have yeah. that? We, yeah, I can. I mean, if they've said it, if they, if they put it in their records, I mean. Well, I have access to anyone's certification who works in the district okay. who's a certified employee. Okay. Um, so I can check anyone's certification and we can, no, I mean, it really has, it's. But. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I mean, if the search is internal, I just want to make it expansive internal as well. well. I think people have to request that their name be considered, right? They can't. We can't. Well, yeah. let me just, let me just it's still say a so. formal process. Yeah. yeah. I let, me, let me just that. say this, yeah. though, on this piece of it. Because I've actually talked to a fair number of superintendents. It, it is totally, first of all, it's all totally my prerogative to appoint somebody. Yes. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's done a fair amount mm -hmm. in school districts. Um, and I actually lean toward that and just had privately talked to people. Um, and Kim, frankly, a lot of the controversy about this, I, I, it may, may suggest that we do that, but I wanted people to have the opportunity to, to apply and to have a chance to talk about their thinking and their philosophy in a, in, as we would do with anything. But I... Um, I thought that was a fair thing to do for people mm -hmm. who wanted to, to do it, and I knew that there were several people who were interested. Mm -hmm. But that is actually not how it's often done in other districts. It's just not. Right. And um, it's and need you just example. move. Yeah. You, it's it's just like mm -hmm. a teacher. You can move to, you know of a need. We have a lot of district positions. We move them from school to school. When we hire a principal. It is in their contract that they can be appointed to any other school in the district. 
Mm -hmm. That's in the contract. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why I can't do that. Mm -hmm. And frankly, maybe that's what's going to end up happening. But I still want to have all the people who are interested to have an opportunity to talk about this. And I don't, I don't want to cut off the opportunity. Mr. Spiegel. The other thing we are, we, we were also talking about the job description for that position. Mm -hmm. Because while well, it would be very similar to the job description for the Audison principal mm -hmm. position, it is a new position in right. the district. We haven't had a sixth grade only mm -hmm. building. And so we would, uh, I think we're working on just um, drafting that. It really, it's very similar to what we have for the Audison already, mm -hmm. um, but it is sort of a, a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, wait, let me get Dr. Allison Ampey first. <clears throat> okay. About this, about the suggestion that we've heard from outside about targeting the um, search, mm -hmm. is that even legal? I mean, to try and target a search to increase diversity? No, no one's saying that. No one's saying that. They're just saying. That they're I'm saying, not saying we're saying. I'm not saying we're saying that. No, no, they're not saying that either. But that they're not saying that. The there are. There are. No one said that, that I've seen, that I've seen, yeah. So, so I think what the point is, if we, it, if we search externally, we don't know necessarily who our, the available pool is. Mm -hmm. And we would advertise broadly to include any qualified licensed applicant. And, and we do have a goal, which many school districts have a goal, of increasing the diversity of our professional staff in the district. That's not a secret. With the limits we have with our current professional staff, administrative staff, I mean, that's where yeah. um, it, it limits the, the pool a little bit. That's, I think that's the yeah, point, that's the but I don't that's think the, it's, that's the claim we that wouldn't I be made. only um, targeting. Yeah, I haven't seen anything oh. else. I'm, okay. I'm not going to get into which one it is. I'd just like to know the answer because I want to shut down one of, conversa one of the side things that has been coming to us. I, so I, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming it's not legal to target a search based on no, We, I mean, we certainly could not limit a search to one um, racial, ethnic, religious group. We couldn't okay. say only these right. people can apply. We would target everyone. If we're, but we can limit a search. We can limit in a search to internal candidates and prefer internal yeah, candidates sure. or just do an internal search. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm not questioning about the internal yeah. search. It, it's so, the, the first bit is what I thought. Actually, I that, that raises a question. Do we have a, those standard lines? We're an equal opportunity employer do. down and everything. Oh, yeah, so that's, yes, that's, that's what we have everything. that. I was just everything. curious. Yeah. All right. Um, mm -hmm. Mr. Hainer. I just want to make it clear. I have seen nothing coming to me as an individual member of this committee that the issue that I have been getting is to the, the difference between internal and external search. There may have been rationale to do an external search, but the, the main premise was to, to do an external, an all-encompassing external search. But the prerogative does belong to the school district mm -hmm. and the superintendent yep. to do everything she has said today under the law. And I, I just want to point out, this is not the only search that we are making oh. in the district. Yes. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, that, that yes. we have positions, there'll be other mm -hmm. opportunities mm -hmm. for to fill positions that we will be searching wide and mm -hmm. far. We far. just had a vacancy come up uh, this week for a special education teacher at the Audison Middle School. If anyone knows <laughs> people who are interested in being a special education teacher at the Audison Middle School, let me know. And of course, we need substitutes. <laughs> That's not going to We happen. need. Right. And we but definitely, we always need substitutes. And we always need substitutes. Hey, I got, a, uh, I, I've, I've yeah. That's cool. helped out a little bit All there. right, so okay. much for the Gibbs. All right, so, okay, gets, so the Gibbs, um, a, yes. And high Hardy. school. Oh, Hardy. Hardy, All right, Hardy yes. Um, yes, we, we had a proposal from uh, for the, the school enrollment task force. We already talked about this, mm -hmm. and we're now at the point of trying to figure out what is the uh, the correct amount that would be necessary. And I actually had a, a long conversation with the architect earlier today, in fact, and to look at um, really what are the soft costs. The, the thing about when you do small projects, the soft costs um, are are higher than what they are in a usual standard in industry. So when you do, I've learned a lot about this. So you do your, your, your range for your square foot, but then you add tack on 20%. The fact of the matter is in small projects, it's higher. So we're, the mm -hmm. town manager and I are, 
I've had been had some discussion about this, but one soft of the other things like about the soft costs include furniture, furniture, the op the carpet. project manager, architectural mm. fees, right. okay. you know, all mm -hmm. of that. The the per square foot <clears throat> is a construction cost. Right, right. But one of the other things that came up with Hardy, which I think is something that w we will discuss um, at some point, and that is whether the cafeteria is adequate. Um, it's, again, it goes back to that common space issue. So I have uh, a couple of scenarios which are going to be costed out, and and it, then it's a question of a, you know, is that something that we we think we should do? So. So have there has there been a vote at the school enrollment task force about one of the plans or it was a recommendation, recommendation. for a six classroom addition at Hardy we permanent construction. We recommend six classroom addition contingent upon the town manager and the superintendent meeting to determine financing. Financing okay. of it. And and there was also the issue of taking a look at auxiliary areas okay. too. Yes. Motion by Mr. Foskett, second by me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So so that's that's done. Done. Okay. We're done. We're moving forward <laughs> on the gonna, cost piece. Okay. Charlie so, and I are going to start building next week. Just going to dig. <laughs> do it. So, so do we're it. now coming to the high school. High school. The high school. Yes. We're um, we're moving forward. We don't have a <clears throat> new number yet. Uh, that we're working with MSBA. There's been more communication this week, but so we're not enrollment number. We're, enrollment number enrollment for number. the high school. The yes. design enrollment number. Mm -hmm. And. Um, as soon as I know more, I'll let you know. But I will, did find something out this week that, you know, hopefully we're going to move this forward and fairly quickly because this year they've canceled a number of their board meetings. And now they're going to have a February board meeting and a May. Ugh. So we have to get February. So we really need to, <laughs> so, so I think that's our collective goal is to try to get to that February yes. once we can move this forward. And so just to clarify, I know we, there have been a number of things that we had to do in 180 days. I understand we've done, done all those things, but there's still that final thing about the right. um, number, the size. Okay. Our eligibility period actually goes to March. I mean, okay. so we're not at you the edge of that. Edge. It's more the, the edge of when we need to get moving so we can be on the February yeah. okay. uh, agenda. Okay. So that's where we are. I'm going to let Dr. Chesson talk a little bit, but just prefacing yes. here, one of the things we wanted to talk about is the dashboard. Yes. And just like we have constraints of buildings, we have constraints of our website in terms of what, it can, what can be managed on it. So there's been a lot of work that, to create some graphics um, about some of the key things people want to know about. We're getting it up. It's it's a it's still a work in progress. We'll be continuing to add to it. But I think one of the things that came up in the recent discussions, um, and I'll let, I'll let Laura talk more about it, and that is that we should also create some links to information rather than trying to replicate it on our website. And that's the direction we're going. This was po this is already up on the website now. And we have three spots that you can locate it. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. Sure. So um, one of the things is that we're trying to, uh, as my technology person tells me, we're trying to get uh, a um, filet mignon with a hot dog budget mm -hmm. so, yeah. uh, or a hot like dog that. tool. So we're, we have some good information. I think it's information that people will um, enjoy taking a look at, mm -hmm. but it's not as interactive, perhaps, as we would hope to have. Um, so if uh, Claudia added this to the district um, website, oh, sorry. Claudia added this to the district website this week. So if people at home go under, um, I'll go back to home, uh, under the quick links, you'll see the district dashboard there. If you go into administration, you'll see the district dashboard there. And there's a third place that I just, for some reason, can't remember where it is. Um, and if uh, people choose to go to that, so there's an introduction to the dashboard. There are a number of charts on enrollment. Mm -hmm. um, and then I will page um, down so you can see those. It's right here. Um, district dashboard quickly yep on the quick links on the left hand side mm -hmm. um, so there's a number of enrollment charts that are out there there are a number of budget charts which will probably look familiar to many people mm -hmm. um, that are underneath there 
Um, and then this is what Dr. Bordy was just alluding to. So student outcomes, most of the um, data that we present in student outcomes is actually available through the Department of Education website under mm -hmm. the school and district profiles, um, under the assessment portion and out of the under accountability portion. So uh, probably next week when you click on this, instead of getting the message that this is currently under development, you'll actually get transferred to the Department of Education website to those portions mm -hmm. of the school and district profile that have that information. And they are all pretty interactive. Yeah. So there will be, you know, you will get a direct connection. So someone won't have to remember what the Department of Education website is and where you so go. So get direct and stuff like that. to Arlington's. Yes, okay. there will be a direct mm -hmm. link to Arlington. Um, the same thing with staffing. Um, that also, there's also a great deal of staffing information that's available through the Department of Education website, and that will be um, also put, be put up there. And then technology will bring you to a number of uh, charts that you've actually seen earlier um, over the last year or so um, that have to do with <clears throat> technology and how many pieces of technology and bandwidth and stuff like that. So um, we, that that's what our goal is. But these- Can we have a link to the technology plan? Uh, well, that's actually already on the site it underneath is. the departments, I believe. I was just wondering if it, if, 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 it, it might be helpful, helpful to have a link here. Yeah, but we could have a yeah. cross link. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. The, the, the stats on DESI, on, as far as staff and something, it's just a number. Just a blank. It says, it'll say the Arlington School Department, elementary, boom, or by the school. It also talks about um, the percentage of teachers that are highly qualified, the percentage of teachers right, that are teaching right. in their but subject I, area. The people that have asked me questions about it, they're asking about uh, some of its salaries, uh, which I, I think it's really good to show that we're not competitive with the other uh, communities and stuff like a that. A comparison mm -hmm. of our salaries. A, com yeah. a comparison salary thing. Yeah. I mean, beginning and set, I'm not looking for uh, Dr. Boyd or teacher right. Ray and such. such right. I, I, the average salary right. compared average to other salary districts. And, but, but also do comparisons uh, of other schools and stuff like that. So those are things we could add over time. But again, they would be static charts. Um, yeah. One of the things that, that we had gotten original feedback on was that folks wanted to be able to sort of like roll over a graph and see yeah. what the data point is that's associated with that. And we just don't have the tools that are available to do that. And <coughs> we have one person who's supporting 10 schools. Right. And doing nine other things in this. So, so. But it could be an opportunity to link to th other things that are yes. produced. So yes. actually on budget information, I can see a lot of things that we could be linking to yes. potentially. Other there. budget presentations yeah. that we have in. Yeah. in so we have some we graphs, should. but then we have some links there, just an easy way to get Absolutely. to them. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So there would be one place where people could go for a specific information. Right. Right. So that's where, where we stand now. And I expect that over the next three or four months, you'll continue to see things added, and we'll bring those to your attention as we add them. Okay, so we have 80%, um, 70% developed now. We have another couple of weeks, we'll have even more. Yeah, I think it's probably more like 60 because we have enrollment and we have budget. Student outcomes will come fairly quickly. Yep. Um, the staffing information that Mr. Hainer talked about will probably, I have to create those charts and there will be a static link of yep. PDF charts. Um, and technology, the technology plan, we already have that. We're in the process of updating it. Okay. I've already set up meetings with a number of um, teachers at a couple of different schools to get feedback, and we'll be having uh, a parent okay. meeting is where we get, people will have um, opportunity to give feedback um, as part of the work we're going to be doing with Vision 2020. Mm -hmm. um, that was originally scheduled for January, and then given the weather, yes. they thought better, and we pushed it out to March. So yes. there will be a, a joint meeting that's sponsored by um, Vision 2020 mm -hmm. and the Curriculum and Instruction Department mm -hmm. to talk about what we envision for schools, and one of those um, places will be for parents to give us feedback about technology. And I should just to ask a question about that, is that the same thing as the technology showcase? Um, I have to or? discuss that with AEF, whether okay. they still want us to do a separate one or, the, or they'll put or it together. Or this will be merged in yes. and do one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Anyway, any questions, comments about dashboard before <coughs> anything else? Okay. Great. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Things. Yes. And more from Dr. Reddy. We I might will have to, to make them really fast. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, before we start at the top of the list is Danielle Rad, who is a science teacher in the oh, high yeah. school. Yeah. We will there'll be an, uh, an uh, information in my newsletter more about it, but I really do want to acknowledge the fact that the American Association for the Advancement of Science um, featured her as the teacher of the month for all of her very creative, innovative work. And I have to say, her, her courses. People can't get into them, they're so popular. 
So I want to congratulate uh, Danielle for this, this great honor. Um, tonight, we had, I just briefly was able to get down there. Uh, they had students who've been in the internship program um, do a display of their learnings and what their projects were uh, for, and this year is, we, we've done it differently. In the past, people sort of sat in an audience and they gave a presentation, which actually I sort of like, but when you have now 40 students, it becomes a little bit more difficult. And, but they, they set it up like we've done the math fair in which people could go around and circulate and they had to get so many tags of people that they gave their presentations. Because one of the things that we do want to have in this is students have the opportunity to present, right. explain. And um, there was really, the, the range of projects was so interesting from computer geeks kinds of things, technical. We have one student who's been working with the computer cafe and she does hard drive transfers. Mm -hmm. And we had the food bank, we've had people work with the athletic department, engineering department. It was a wide range. And of course, one of our efforts in this program is to get more placements for our students. So we have 40 this year and we're hoping to grow it at least another 20 next year. And actually, I, I, we've talked about um, having a, a presentation at the school committee, which I hope we can work out this year. I'm um, sure we can. Dr. Jenger, with then maybe some exemplars of mm -hmm. some of the things that students are doing. Yep. Really Let me, uh, me, I'm sure that we can do that. This, it's a great opportunity for the students, and then you can hear what they're doing. Yeah. See, from our, our vantage point, the, this is, you've heard a lot what was going on with world language. It's students learn by doing, and they learn that the one thing that came through when I would ask students what they learned, they learn about themselves. They learn about the skills they had. They learned whether they liked it. And one person said, I don't think I'll ever go into this field now. But others said yes. So it, it's an opportunity just to learn outside the walls of a school. Yep. Um, last night, uh, I went to Frozen Fenway. We were invited. Uh, Arlington and Burlington played. We were invited to come and play on the ice of the Fenway, and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, if, if the number of people that were there were in our rink, it would be overflowing. In Fenway, it, it felt like sprinkles everywhere. Mm -hmm. But it was a lot of fun. Our students uh, did oh, well. It was a warm night. Huh? It was a good night. Yeah. <laughs> it was a perfect night. Yeah. I was thinking about this on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was a lovely night out there, and they did well. And it, but we, as the, the superintendent in Burlington said, this, is, this game is about friendship and fun, and that's what it was. So we also were invited on Sunday to the, the garden. Our girls' basketball team played Belmont. And again, that was a great experience for them. Speaking of storms, the mention of storms came up. We did have a surprise storm. And it brings up, and I, I say this, maybe I'll say it every meeting we have, <laughs> that if, if parents feel that it's unsafe to go out in weather, certain weather conditions, what they, all they need to do is to call the school and say, w you know, our, my child cannot be there because I, I don't feel it's safe conditions for them to walk or for me to drive. While it will be counted as an absence, it is an excused absence because you have two types, excused and unexcused. You don't want to be in the unexcused. So, um, it's fine, but there's sometimes, that was a big surprise. Hopefully we we'll, won't have any more of those this year. We'll see. Um, that is it. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So I think it is possible we have to push the timing of consent this. Consent agenda. <laughs> Can I read this? Because I, I didn't get a copy. Okay, so we'll do the consent agenda quickly. Um, all items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion of those items unless a member of the committee so requests in which event the item will be considered in its normal sequence. Approval of warrant, warrant number 17098, dated 12-15-2016, total warrant account $532,685.58. Approval of minutes, school committee regular meeting, December 15th, 2016. Um, moved. So moved by Ms. Starks. Second. Seconded by Mr. Steelman. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? <coughs> Unanimous? Okay. Um, <coughs> this is something we have to get done tonight. Aye. Mr. Hayner, do you want to?
give a quick description right. of the and my, uh, my recycling machine just stuff. crashed. If you can call up the, yep. the policy. Uh, we have been uh, in a position, we thought this was already done and we had already done it. We have not done it. So the, there is a grant that we we're involved it's, in and they, and they need to have a school committee policy in place before they can get the grant. So basically, uh, so we're waiving we, the two reads. Right, yeah, I'm yeah, we're, we want to vote on tonight as if possible. Well. So moved. So, yeah. so. <laughs> second. It's okay. pretty straightforward. I mean, yeah, it's, it's pretty yeah. straightforward. Yeah. Uh, it's Mr. Thielman, not second bit of Mr. Slickman. Any discussion? No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Okay, that's unanimous. And if I may, yes. do, do we want to discuss? I sent you folks a uh, copy of the emails that I got from other districts. You would ask for that. Do you want to do that now, or do you want to do it under policy? Uh, Guiding MASCs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's I'll do it under, do it under policy. Let's do it under policy. Um, okay, so actually, um, I want to make a quick comment, and I'm very bad at this too, but um, if anybody has uh, subcommittee uh, minutes to send, I haven't seen them in a while, so. Just send them for the next meeting to Karen. I do. Okay. Yeah, okay. I sent mine. Yep. Yeah, I, I just have, I haven't seen the list. Maybe because Karen was going away that we haven't, I just haven't seen them in a little bit. Um, okay, so uh, subcommittee and liaison reports. Uh, let's see. Budget. What? Budget's first, yes, yeah. budget. Okay, so you heard a lot of it. Mm -hmm. um, just to explain, there's, there was some confusion, um, the draft, the reason there's a draft budget presentation is that the budget subcommittee was talking about how we're going to do outreach and we're going to be trying to set up meetings with different PTOs um, at their meeting and come and do a presentation. This was meant to be posted to the budget. Oh, okay, not to this one. It ended okay. up here. You can look at it, but it's, it needs to be updated, so it's, it's not it. correct. It's but not... It'll, it'll look something like that. Okay, okay. Um, and... Uh, And we discussed the, uh, oh. the, the circuit breaker. Yeah, yeah, we already talked about that. But the other thing that we talked about was that the warrant um, will close at near the end of January, and we need to have two things put on it. Mm -hmm. One is to have the creation of a new special education reserve account. You mean in the school district, right? Because there's this new regulation that that's, you don't. That's what I'm talking that's about. That's what you're talking about. If okay. you look up the law, it has to be approved by I the by town town's meeting. legislation, yep. legislative okay. body, which I assume is town yep. meeting. So yep. we need to get it on the warrant so it can go through. Um, and then we also need to have something put on the warrant so we have the money taken out of the account or out of wherever it is right now of to the use town for the special education yes. account. Yeah. Okay. So, so is that something mm -hmm. that we will and get? Dr. Bodhi Dr. said Bodhi will be on top of it. Okay. okay. He would work on it. Okay. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Community relations. Um, next community relations subcommittee meeting will be on Monday, the 23rd from okay. five to six I don't think I um, that. here. And uh, I just wanted to know from Jeff and Bill, how it went for uh, your school committee chat. Excellent. Oh, yes. Yeah. Anybody talk to you? Yes. Oh, yeah. A lot of people. That we oh, had great. To, you, no way. You want to send that to, the, to everybody after us, that report? We didn't think that. Yeah, we, yeah, so Bill did a report. <coughs> of how many people came by? And I added it. Yeah. And we had yeah. about, we had several people. The table was full. Lots of oh, people came great. to talk to That's us. Awesome. Yeah. 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 I don't know why you didn't have anybody come talk to you. Well, I really didn't. It wasn't was publicized. We hadn't had advertised that. sufficiently, I think, we, in the we, first time. We had a gentleman that presented, we'll send it to you, a proposal to get substitutes here. Uh, and while it's an escalating pay scale, but it's mm -hmm. it's moderate. Yeah, and, and, and he's been a sub here for a long time. He, he talked about that. Oh, he talked about the pay. Yeah. Uh, okay. other, uh, well, people had questions about the Gibbs. There yeah. were several questions. Several parents came to us. Have fourth graders who want to know what the plan is for the Gibbs. Mm -hmm. um, there was a question about when the high school will be done. Yep. Uh, you know, the previous question, <laughs> when's it going to begin? But that was the question that was asked. Uh, there were questions about. Uh, it was a tax dialogue that we yeah. had with somebody uh, who wanted to know where the town was going in terms of the tax burden. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of, and, and then we had the, the go, ahead. It, go ahead, I'm trying to think. There were times when uh, Jeff and I were talking to different talking people. Talking to the yeah. same person, the other time separate people. Because yeah. mm -hmm. there's so many people. went by real fast. It went really, yeah, we really That is yeah. great it was to hear. jammed up, lots that of people. That is great to people. hear. I got there a little early. Librarians, so they, so yeah. somebody came by yeah. to lobby uh, yeah. for the librarian pay. Um, Certified librarians bring them yeah. back. Yeah. So I think it'd be helpful to get reports in 
well, every time he, we do he, this. You got yeah. it. I, I, I got it. I yeah. edited it. Yeah, no, that's back to him. It doesn't, the no, timing doesn't matter, but it'd be, it'd be really helpful. We'll, we'll, Each time we do this, we should create a, a short okay. report, one page or something, that's of what, yeah, and so we all get a sense. What was discussed? What were people's concerns were? What was discussed? I'll start at the Karen. I got it. great. The sign is definitely important because I got there about a half hour early to make sure we'd have a little corner. Yep. I put the sign, but there were three empty seats, and I kept saying, you can sit here until 11 o'clock. And a couple of people sat, had the thing left, and one guy came. And said, I haven't got enough time. <laughs> so actually, saw, but then he saw the sign. He says, he sat, and he was, they were the first couple to talk. Yeah. So, so actually, this bring, is a, if you could also bring the sign. Yeah, this is a one staff So we're relying on Cindy to sort of distribute these signs. So we have to. Sure. I'm yeah. happy to do that. Okay. As Excellent. community Work. relations person. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> kind of, you know. It was, it okay. was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. The next one is in February. Fourth, and we don't have anybody signed up for that yet. Okay. okay. So, <coughs> anybody? Does everybody? Did everybody get the link to the Google Doc? Send it out Jeff again. Jeff obviously did because he signed up. I did. I signed Bill up. I, yeah. I signed up for some other. I saw one. you signed up for Mark. Send the link out again just to make our lives okay, all easier. Okay, I will do that. That'd be great. Okay. But it was a lot of fun. Great dialogue. Lots good. of good questions. Good, oh, good time spent. So glad. So glad. Okay. Do we want to um, extend this time period? Three minutes We're before. Have to. Move to have to. No, I want to hear from Cindy. The motion needs to come from Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> Cindy. All right. Uh, move to uh, extend the ten o'clock rule to ten fifteen. Oh, okay. Second. No. We're going to do it again. I don't care. I mean, it doesn't, you don't have no. to end at ten fifteen. Second. You can end at ten go. ten. Okay. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. No? no? It's passed. It's Mr. passed. Schlickman, Let's go. Let's keep going. Who had going. many times that went after 10. Okay. <laughs> it's his Paul. Yeah. yeah. Go, okay. Um, okay. So um, next is District Accountability Curriculum Instruction and Assessment. Um, we have to meet. Remember okay. that? That's the issue. Yeah. 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 We have to meet. Is everybody available Wednesday? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Why don't we talk about it offline? Yeah. We'll talk about yeah. it yeah. at, at the end of the meeting. Talk okay. about it offline, yeah. Okay. Uh, facilities, Mr. Thuin. The school enrollment task force met. There was a good report on yep. it. We're building it, the Hardy. We're building it. So basically, I mean, at this point, school enrollment task force and facilities are same thing. Same thing. Right. Yeah, and there's no real. And last year we had a need to meet in advance because there were some more strategic challenges. And right. I don't not, think that I, the committee hasn't felt the need to do that this year. Are you guys continuing to meet? Or is there? The as needed. There is another, yes. There's a meeting coming. They haven't set the date yet because they, he's waiting for information on uh, actual pricing. Uh, we might have right. set a date. Okay, I can't I remember. We set a date I think we did. We did. We? Yeah. Yeah, we did. I can't remember. I don't know when the next one is. Let me see if I can find um, it. Can you send me that? Yes. Okay. Okay. It's February 8th. February 8th. Wednesday, February 8th at 6 o'clock. Correct. Right here in this room. In this room. Okay, six o'clock in this room. Okay. Policies? Yes, policies. Um, begin off, I, I sent you folks copies. I asked uh, Mike Gilbert to uh, communicate with members that he's currently working with and, and have wor has worked with on doing their policy books and um, uh, asked them to please send us the good, the bad, and the right. ugly of their yeah. experiences. He sent me a copy of the email. I should have sent that to you, I'm sorry. Uh, only got two responses, and I sent those two responses to you three. folks. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Um, do you want, to, would those be in the minute, and the I, 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 mean, only, I should be in correspondence. They, they should be in correspondence, I think. They may be. Oh, maybe they are already in there, okay. They got, only got sent yesterday. Um, I don't think they are, so I that would be. I don't think they are. Let's they send will a definitely note to be Karen in the correspondence the next time. That they'll, right. okay. Do, how much is it that it costs? Ten thousand yeah. dollars. Over three years. Over three over years. Three years. Oh, you pay it over three years. And that gets you what? A new policy book, updated, with legal opinion, uh, legal approvals. I'm giving and you. There's a, no like, ours is already in good shape, so it's only half that. No. Because, <laughs> no. I mean, we're diligent about keeping ours. Yeah, we're not as much of a mess as some of the I other I mean, districts the ones have. that you got letters from, I can see paying $10,000. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Allison. We, we ask that. Oh. Yeah. That, was, that was one of the questions <laughs> yes. we asked, yes. All right, so the, do we have to make a decision tonight, or do, does that make sense to make a decision tonight, or? Well, for, the, for, my, per, for my feelings, I decision. would like to have it done so we can start the doing the contract, yeah, having the contract signed and setting up dates, and, and, yep. and we can give our priorities of which policies we want to look at first, and 
going through the whole book. Um, okay. It's, it, but I mean, if folks want to put it off, we have a meeting. This, uh, the, the other part I was going to say, our next meeting will be on January 19th in this room at 530. We will be discussing student activity fee policy, that and, and MASC schedule <coughs> if we approve it. Okay. So I'm going to, is it appropriate? Yeah, uh, yeah put a motion a, on motion. and we'll discuss it. Move to uh, contract with uh, Massachusetts Association of School Committees to uh, review and revive and update our current policy book. Okay. Second. Mr. Hayner, seconded by Mr. Slickman. Okay, discussion on the moment. I would Question. also note that as a result of this, they will end up hosting our policy manual on their site. Right. If we for want the, If we want them to do it. Well, within that, but there's a period of time for that three years, and then we'd have to pay an additional amount for After that. future yeah. posting, is what I understand. Oh. Right. So, but they'll post it for those peri that period of time, and then, mm -hmm. but the. I, I would like to say that's a choice, because in one of those mm -hmm. emails, they made a choice they not to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. But we don't get It's a chance. choice thing. Mm -hmm. You don't get any money back for that. <laughs> Ms. Scott. So, I, I, so the $10,000 gets us, they're going to do anything and everything we want with our policy manual, then what do we do go moving forward? You mean, I mean is the expectation like, that every uh, I think, so I, often I, I, you hire I, them and I clean don't have everything a, I up? don't have access to it right now, but I think it's also part of the thing. They will provide us uh, with necessary changes and updates to what they've already done mm. on, as it comes through from the state and the federals and stuff like that. Uh, which they, they, I think they do sometimes. They do that anyway. They're, They're doing that, that right service. now. Well, they send us how we should change it. Yeah. 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 But it, it, my opinion, that's a cut and paste at that point from current, we've already updated it. The biggest thing that I see, we're doing this and we're not the pros right now. And part of the thing is turning around and they're going to do it in conjunction with us. So if we... We're having the comptroller coming on, on the 19th to discuss the student activity. When that policy would come up, would automatically invite our people to come in and ask the questions as well. But it also provides us the legal that we no longer have to pay uh, legal opinion uh, of what we, money when we come expenses. up with the final product that we want, we normally send it to uh, legal for approval on most of the policies because sometimes, mm -hmm. it's, especially mm -hmm. if, the, if we've tweaked them in such a way we're worried about them, they have legal counsel to support their, their document or what we come up with as well. We're not stuck. They're not going to come in and just uh, no, give us. No, I know. A it's okay. just a, in, in our yeah. in our very tight financial situation. Yeah. It's just really, really hard to it's, want to spend ten thousand dollars on making our policies clean. That's all. I mean, if I, I had to say something that was a nice to have, it's I, a nice to have. It's I, not a gotta have. I would say I think I, I would venture to guess we're going to spend more on legal than ten thousand dollars over a three-year period on our policies. Mm. If, Really? Dr. Mm -hmm. Alice Hamby. If we could catch even one thing, like what happened with the privacy problem that led to our legal, our massive legal issues that are now thankfully in the past, mm -hmm. that would be worth mm -hmm. well paid. a lot of money. Okay. Okay. Any more discussion? Question. What? Move the question. Okay, so yeah, okay. Um, so all those in favor of um, this motion, which is spend ten thousand dollars over three years to ask MSBA to update our policies. Aye. To engage in a contract aye. with them. Okay. To engage sure. in a contract with them. M -A -S. Um aye. all signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I'm gonna oppose it. Okay. Opposed by Starks okay. abstentions? Aye. Yeah. Okay. All right, so it's not unanimous. So we're taking notes, yes. Um, okay. Uh, next thing. School enrollment. Oh, we did it. Warren, did it. everybody did it. got paid. Uh, Warren committee, Aaron, liaison okay. reports. No, we have one more thing. I, yes. I, I, I wasn't in the, the thing. Are we a, a subcommittee of a subcommittee on yeah, starting the chairman? Yeah, we're a subcommittee. Oh, right. So the legal services. Oh, we should add that too. Do you want to, you want to postpone it until the next meeting and you give them, or do you want to discuss it now? Uh, I can but, discuss it now. It's pretty simple, I think. Yeah. So the, it's in Novus. I asked Karen to send it out, but I don't think... It's I'm not here. getting her email. Did she email it to you? It's in the post. Yeah. It's, it's in It is our recommendation Anyways, that they the recommendation. So we're already operating under the agreement as revised. So obviously we're going to continue for the for the current year. Um, but before we actually sign off on a three-year agreement, there's still some more work we need to do. Um, we need to. We want to find out. You know, make sure that our expenses are in line with other towns, um, and 
there's a discrepancy in what they said the agreement, what they, what they said the prior agreement was mm -hmm. in their new letter and what their old letter said the prior agreement was is different. So unless that changed along the way? I, I think I remember that it changed somewhere along the way. I don't I remember which year and I can't think of what search terms to look for it. So okay. what, what, but what does that, how high is our retainer at this point? 60,000 or 70,000? I think it is the 70. Because the new okay. letter. Well, well, that's, that we'll, we'll verify that yeah. and come back okay. to you. Okay. Um, so we will come back. So we back. should have these letters someplace. So I, I, I guess we probably should have a motion to, con to operate under the agreement for the rest of the year because um, it technically is an agreement between the school committee and the law firm. Mm -hmm. um, so do we need that motion in that? I mean, we're, that's we, a default we, position. We have not authorized the, the, They've changed the, the, terms. the changes in the terms that, that we're operating propose. under right now. So we need a mo we do need a motion. Okay. Okay. So, so I move that we uh, motion approve, by Mr. Cardin. Uh, we approve operating under that agreement through the end of this uh, fiscal year. Okay. Second. Seconded by Mr. Hayner. All in favor, or any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, and so you guys are going to continue to meet to discuss the future contract. <clears throat> yes. Right, okay. Aye. Excellent. Okay, um, any liaison reports? Yes, Mr. Hayner. I presented our budget process to uh, the PTO at Dallin uh, the other night and attempted to answer questions and gave them, uh, uh, gave them uh, link, uh, email links uh, to get more information and to contact the budget subcommittee. I want to thank uh, Dr. Ampey for providing me uh, the additional information. Uh, it's very good. And I uh, also met with uh, a regular meeting with the Town Building Committee, but Dr. Bodie covered everything that mm -hmm. dealt with us relating to the schools. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other liaison reports? Nope. Um, future agenda items, Mr. Hayner. I would like to have uh, an item for executive session uh, to discuss uh, the CFO salary. Okay. Going forward. Is that that's appropriate, I assume? That's yes. Okay. And okay. preparing for negotiations, I think it's very appropriate we do this. Okay. Um, okay, so I um, have made a decision to not do executive session tonight because it's only to approve the minutes. Okay. And I think we should not go into an executive session just to approve minutes. Yeah, we should move. push that. See? Um, and, um, <laughs> and we will approve the minutes, you know, That'll when we go into executive session for some other reason. Right. Um, so, motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> by Mr. Second. Thielman, seconded by Ms. Starks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I have 37 minutes left. See? Adjourned. Mm -hmm.